Norman, Oklahoma. Non-conference showdown between the Oregon Ducks and the Oklahoma Sooners, the number two team in the nation on a very hot, humid day. Temperatures in the mid-90s here in Norman. Dusty Dvorak out for the season. For more on that, let's go down to Sam Ryan. And Terry, with Dusty's latest incident, several other allegations have surfaced, leading to his dismissal from the team. Head coach Bob Stoops released a statement yesterday in which he said, quote, I've learned more throughout the course of the day now and believe there's sufficient pattern of behavior to merit Dusty's removal from the team. Now, those other alleged incidents include reports of a bar fight last March in Norman. The alleged victim suffered a broken nose. No charges were filed because Dusty paid the medical bills. Also, yesterday, allegations surfaced of the incident back in spring of 02 in Addison, Texas, and with Dusty and some of his friends were involved in a fight at a party which they crashed. Also in 02, Cleveland County DA's office evaluated but never pursued a sexual assault complaint filed with OU police. OU's SID office refused to comment on these latest allegations. Terry? All right, Sam, so uh, as we turn to Tim Brandt and Terry Bowden right now, guys, we'll start with you, Timmy. From a personal standpoint, it's awfully disheartening for everyone involved, but what about a football standpoint? How much are they going to miss Dvorak? Well, he was a captain of the team, so I think they're disappointed. But on the field, I don't know. It won't affect them at all. As a matter of fact, they're too deep, too talented, and too experienced to let that happen. Two guys who are playing today, however... Let's start with Antonio Perkins, one of the best return guys in the country. He is big. He is fast. He's got great vision. He never offers his body up to the tackler. He's returned eight kicks for touchdowns. But the guy everybody will be watching today and eyes will be firmly focused on Jason White. Here's a guy who has the Heisman Trophy at home. He never loses as a starter. He's 17 and 3. He is very efficient, doesn't make very many mistakes. 51 touchdown passes, and out of every 13 passes that he throws, one's a touchdown. That's his remarkable status. Defensively, boy, if they force some turnovers against Oregon early, it could get ugly. Oregon just need to worry about themselves. They came into the season expecting to have a great year. They didn't expect to have seven turnovers the first game, four fumbles three interceptions, along with that, just a disaster in their specialty play. They dropped punts, uh, they had a field kickoff return, uh, a call to back, they gave up a kickoff return. You know, you can correct, uh, you can't correct the lack of talent, you can't correct the lack of experience, but the good thing for Mike Blotty and his team, they can correct turnovers and specialty teams. And right here, this guy, Kellen Clemens, he's a great one number one sophomore quarterback in their history. He needs to have a big game. But Terry, they've only had a week to correct it, and they come to Norman to play the number two team in the nation. <laughs> Mike Bellotti and Bob Stoops are the most successful coaches in the history of their respective programs. Oregon and Oklahoma next. Back in Norman, Terry Gannon, Terry Bowden, Tim Brandt, and Sam Ryan. And Oregon has won the toss, but they have elected to defer. So they will kick off. It'll be Jared Siegel, the senior from Sacramento, and Mark Clayton back deep for the Sooners. What do you think about this decision, Tim? You know, that this is the normal decision to make, but I think in this instance it's a big mistake. I want to keep Jason White, Clayton. I want to keep all these guys off the field as much as possible. I don't want to give them the ball right out of the gates. I disagree. I still believe in this conventional way of oh, doing things. You do. Get yourself you on do. defense. Don't make your offense make a mistake for early. Didn't take long for an argument. Not even underway yet. Here comes Siegel. Underway here in Norman. Clayton from three yards deep. Going to bring it back out. Got a seam initially. Closes out at the 32. So Mark Clayton bringing it back 32 yards and the Oklahoma Sooners about to come on to the field and they're led by a man who has plenty of experience he'll introduce himself Jason White Tuttle High School Tuttle Oklahoma and Jason White the winner of the Heisman Trophy of course you saw the 71.4 percent the percentage he comes out the sixth year senior last year threw for almost 4,000 yards Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Kiwan Jones, the lone setback as Bubba Moses goes in motion on first and 10 from the 32. Quick out, there's Clayton with the catch. Close to a first down, back pedals, and now again close to that stick. Jerry Matson, the middle linebacker, the senior grad student from Edmonds, Washington, on the hit. So, along with 
Jason why take a look at our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups and Kiwan Jones a little nicked up in that win over Houston last week should be fine this week though and Clayton of course the big play receiver he already owns seven Oklahoma records at this point in his career the offensive front led by Jamal Brown making his 31st consecutive start the senior from Lawton Oklahoma Gain of 11 on the last play. Kiwan Jones wrapped up in the backfield. Going to lose at least one, maybe two. Devin Long, the junior on the stop behind the line. And Long part of that defensive front for Oregon. Salomono, Valenzuela, Matt Toyina getting a start. Haloti Nada, who missed all of last year with a knee injury, uh, out with a hamstring, although he will play, should play in this game. Matson, the only linebacker with any real experience. Gibson, Tucker, Nelson, and Finnessy, the secondary. Obviously, they'll be tested, see if they can keep up with the speed of the wideouts of Oklahoma. Here comes Kiwan Jones looking for a hole, nothing doing. Right at the line of scrimmage and sent backwards. Two very good plays by that defense of Oregon they're trying to do what coach said establish themselves here Oklahoma drive on long drives and eat up the clock this is a quick strike offense so as long as they can keep guys in front of them make plays like this they'll be able to stick in this ball game yeah, Oklahoma has made emphasis on being a better running team those two plays were stuffed by Oregon Oklahoma wants to run very well early third and 11 now for the Sooners again trips to the near side there goes Moses in motion long count for white Plenty of time for the sixth year senior flushed out now though and throws it away under pressure. He had time initially coach. Well he did have time but the mobility that he now has gives them more time. I think the thing that Oklahoma saw last year the receivers got open right there. Oregon secondary did a great job of covering all the pass receivers. So by deferring it now turns out pretty well for Oregon but this is where Jason White when he starts to scramble looks for number nine Clayton can't find him. Nobody's there. They're playing a soft three deep cover. They're trying to keep everybody in front of them. That's a good defensive stand by the Ducks. Blake Ferguson to punt and back deep. Aaron Gibson, one of the men who uh, could not handle the punt last week. Too early on, as Terry said. Two drop punts. Gibson. Fair catch at his own 24. So a punt of 33 yards from Ferguson. And the offense will start outside their own 25 and they are led by a man who is a junior at Oregon. Kellen Clemens from Burns, Oregon. I played at Burns High School. And he had the most prolific sophomore season of any Oregon quarterback and you're talking about some good ones in the history of this program. He surpassed Dan Fouts of all guys our own ABC Dan Fouts. Not bad but in the first game against Indiana three interceptions in that game and also a fumble and by his own admission he did not play well at all Marcus Maxwell in motion straight drop gonna swing it out to Terrence Whitehead tripped up right at the line of the scrimmage and there's the man Antonio Perkins the senior from Lawton Oklahoma so along with Clements check out the rest of our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups Terrence Whitehead sharing time with Kenny Washington in the backfield Dante Rosario had five catches a week ago Marcus Maxwell a big play receiver Tim Day the tight end they'll throw to him a lot today Adam Snyder leading the way on the offensive line all Pac-10 first team last season Terry Oklahoma's defense has given up only one big drive and one big play in two games it is a solid defensive unit Here comes Whitehead. A hole initially, but it closes quickly. Good look at the speed of this Oklahoma defense. As Rufus Alexander, who's been outstanding so far, made the initial hit. The defensive line a little bit different than Sooner fans are used to seeing. Dusty Borachek, we told you about him being dismissed from the team. So it's Pendleton and Magruder inside. Cody and Jackson, two of the best at the defensive end spots. Alexander, Mitchell back off that knee injury, and Clint Ingram, the linebackers, and Rodney Poole, the leading tackler on this team so far this season. Third and six. Clemens under center. Quick throw, almost picked off, and then almost caught by Demetrius Williams. Yeah, these corners for uh, Oklahoma, they're outstanding. Their secondary are so quick, it's very hard to throw a pass on. They don't get you get open very much. You're always tightly covered. Watch this right here with Bassey. Another DB overran it. 
and, and could have had a pick, a dangerous throw. Back deep, there he is, Antonio Perkins, another return for a touchdown last week against Houston. He has eight in his career. You better stay in your lanes and you better cover. You better kick it away from him, what you better do. And you hear the boos here at Memorial Stadium, although there is a flag on the play back at the 15. We'll see what that's all about. Well, this kicking away from him is so difficult. Roughing the kicker was that, roughing the kicker. Against Oklahoma, big break for the Ducks. Oh, huge, but now it gives them a chance to at least control field position here. Yeah, definitely, definitely roughing the kicker, running into the kicker. I don't know whether it's 15 or 5. Cooper Castleberry and his crew here in Big 12. But Terry, you're right. They aren't going to kick to the guy. They're going to kick away from him, but you still have to stay in your lanes and cover. Perkins is one of those guys. Get to the ball, pick it up, and still return it. And also, you're talking about field position. You kick away from him too much, and you're talking about 25, 30-yard punts. Running into the, running kicker. Into the kicker on Oklahoma. Penalties declined. First down. Declined because it, it would not have been right. a first down, and exactly. it was a 54-yard punt, and the fact that you don't want to kick the Perkins again and give him a chance <laughs> to return one. So uh, it'll be Sooner football. Bob Stoops, when we come back. To the game now. Jason White and the Sooners taking over on offense at their own 18. White in his sixth year and going through two ACL surgeries, the right hand, the left foot last year. Even Bob Stoops said, hard to imagine him as a Heisman Trophy winner back when he had the injuries and he was sitting out. You've got to give the guy a great deal of credit for what he did. He's also one of the best feel-good stories in all of sports as you look at Bob Stoops. And when he took over the job, the very next day, he was at White's house recruiting him. He needed to get a quarterback here and actually revamp the system at Oklahoma. And obviously now they throw the ball off at Clayton on first down. The fumble's loose or the ball is loose, and it may be in the hands of the Oregon Ducks. Uh, Jones got it back. It looked, like, yeah, it looked like Oklahoma got, got it back. And uh, you see how quickly Oklahoma's trying to get the ball out into space. Uh, Mike Lotti told me he's not so much worried about his cornerbacks, but his linebackers and defensive ends out there having to cover space because of the speed of Oklahoma. Well, the other thing is, too, yeah, we asked him about his team speed, and he said, hey, we are not that fast. This is not one of my quicker football teams. They've got good football speed. They'll close on right. the ball, but they don't have speed to run with these guys step for step. Pretty good coverage. Ball's loose, and here comes Jones to get it. The speed for Oregon is in the youth of the team. Much of the speed with the younger players. Tough to play them in this game in Oklahoma on the road. Good look at the mobility of White. Ooh. Oh, took a pop at the end. Jerry Matson hit him at the 27. That's a legal hit. If you're going to slide, you better get your butt down on that ground in a hurry. You can't hang yourself out like this. Yeah, and you'd like to think that right here, he's, he's already going to a hook slide. He's really not taking the shot quite as hard because he's getting his body down. You can imagine if he was leaning forward uh, uh, and taking that shot going forward. But that's what we were talking about. Yeah. You're going to see Jason White run the ball. He's more mobile. Get outside the tackles. I don't mean run the football upfield, but outside the tackles, more mobility, buying time, and that's normally when he finds Mark Clayton. He didn't say he's as mobile as he was before the injury. He can get out just better. He's a smarter. Right. But not fast enough uh, maybe to outrun people like there and not get the first down. Well shy of the first down. Bob Stoops with the best winning percentage ever through his tenure at least uh, in the Oklahoma program. You look at uh, the other B's. Bud and uh, Barry, that's impressive. How about this? Oklahoma's been successful 70% of the time on third down conversions this year. Mike Bellotti, the head coach of the Oregon Ducks in his 10th year, 75 and 35, his record, and they have won more games than any other Pac-10 team during that time. So it's third and one for the Sooners as they operate out of the eye. Kiwan Jones, the tailback. Going to run him straight ahead. He's got the first down near the 30-yard line. Best offensive line in the nation. There's no question in my mind. Best offensive line in the nation. And when you're successful that much on third down conversions, it just opens up the playbook for Jason White. Send it back to New York very quickly to John Saunders. Terry, for the Taco Bell update, we move to the SEC, LSU and Auburn. Marcus Randall, nine yards to Dwayne Bowe. They missed the point after, so LSU has a 6 nothing lead. 
Tackle to the left side, a gain of about two for Kiwan Jones. So, Tim, if they've got the best offensive line in the country, they've got the returning Heisman Trophy winner and maybe as good a wide receiver core as anyone in the country. It's not a bad offense. No, and that's what I was saying earlier. I really believe this team is better than the Oklahoma team that won the national uh -huh. championship. I agree with you on offense. Defense, they lose to Lehman, they lose Harris, uh, they lose straight. I don't right. think they have the leadership on defense yet. They could be the best defense, but they're not yet. And now Dvorak is out for the season. Dismissed from the team. Second and eight. Going to run it over the right side. Kiwan Jones, strong running up near the 40-yard line, near another Sooner first down. Good block from J.D. Runnels, the fullback. It was Matson who made the play. You know, so. if, you, if you're Oregon, you think, don't turn the ball over, you know, don't make any big, give them up big plays and make Oklahoma drive the field like this, at least keep you in the ball game to the second Seven half. On the play to the 39-yard line, where it brings up third. But on a day like today, temperature in the mid-90s, you also don't want to see your defense on the field for great lengths of time. Third and one. Moses in motion to the near. Here comes Jones. Big hole for Kiwan Jones. An easy running up to the 44. Another first down for the Sooners. Oklahoma averaging better than 50 points a game, 540 total yards. And there are two wins against Bowling Green and Houston. Watch this. We're talking about the offensive line. Stop it right there. You look at everybody shading down this way. You bring the guard back this way. The running lane straight up here. It's perfect. Look at this. How that, good is that, Coach? That's the second short yardage that they just dominated. That goes to what you said about that offensive line, Timmy. Willie Roberts now in at tight end. Out of the shotgun on first down. White taking a shot, got a man. Oregon Territory complete on plate. Third catch of the afternoon already. 13th catch of the year already. Average of 16 yards a catch. You know, this is a first rounder, and I know again, Coach, you don't agree with me, but he is projected by so many NFL scouts to be a first rounder next spring. The guy does so many things. Now, he lacks size, but he does so many things, and you put him in the slot where he's got the whole field to work, it's almost impossible to stop him. Well, he's just a guy that made himself by hard work. Hard work's what's taken him over the top. Uh, he's a great player. He'll play in the NFL, but I don't think it's just pure natural talent. He does it by hard work. The only doubt is the size. 5'11", 187. The senior is. It's a break here after the gain of 20, and here comes Jones bouncing outside. Look at the speed of Kiwan Jones inside the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. You know, when he watches the tape, he's going to think, why did I cut outside? If I had to cut it back inside and against the grain, it would have been like running downhill. Yeah, and both coaches really are getting what they want. Look at this drive right here. There's what you're talking about. Right there is to get up south, north, south. Had he gone left there instead of right, I'm telling you, there was a huge hole. He also had, uh, I guess it was Vince Carter out in front of him. Kiwan Jones, not the leading rusher on this Oklahoma squad. It's Adrian Peterson, the all-everything freshman from Palestine, Texas. He's in the game right now. Straight drop for White, looking to the end zone. Jones is there, just outside the six. High into the air goes Brandon Jones for the reception. First in goal Sooners. Defensive back was in position here. Look, he couldn't find the ball. He's in the position to make the play. Sam Hughes, now jump up there right here. He could not find the ball and make the play. It was lofted a little bit. Right now, they're showing too much respect, playing right. too soft. You're exactly right, Timmy. They talked about playing soft, not, not giving up the big play, but too much yardage underneath. Gain of 20, so it's first and goal from the six. Peterson, the tailback. Here comes the freshman, wrapped up at the 10. Jerry Matson's been active already in this game. Matson, 6'1, 225, is a senior. He's got to show that senior leadership and use that size and that quickness that he has in that middle to set the tone for this defense because this could be a long afternoon for him. They want to make these long drives, and here they get the penetration. They stay in their lanes on the backside in case he cuts back and made a nice defensive play. Well, again, they run with east and west very good, but they don't have a lot of depth. Matt Toina, I think, plays backup at a lot of the positions, not seven or eight players in that front four. Loss of four. Kiwan Jones back in for Peterson. Out of the gun is White. Got him. Under pressure, and oh. down he goes. Ball is loose. And the Ducks have it. Oregon recovering the fumble. And what a huge turnover for the Sooners. 
came with a backside blitz, got great pressure, stripped him of the ball. White never saw him coming. Yeah, Matt Toina with the fumble recovery. Well, we Oregon talked about not turning the ball over, giving up big plays, but creating turnovers is just as good, if not better. Now, what they're going to do now, have, have the time on offense a little bit. Devin Long's second sack of the year. They never saw him come and stripped him well. That is a huge turnover and momentum changer. So Long with the hit, forcing the fumble. Tolina in his first start for the injured Haloti Nada. Recovering the fumble. So the Ducks take over first and 10 from their own 31. Terrence Whitehead in the backfield with Rosario. Here comes Whitehead. Hit hard across the 30. Then Ingram, Lance Mitchell doubling up on the tackle. Those guys flying around and bouncing around like they hurt you. Coach said, oh, they aren't that impressive defensively. Fellas, their front seven is so good, you can't double up on one. You've got to put a hat on all seven people, and that doesn't allow you to pressure one hole. They're so quick, you can't do it. Coach, if you're a back, you see a hole initially, but it closes so quickly, what was there is not there for long. And you don't have anybody on your practice squad that can simulate that. You don't see it to get on the steal. So it's second and nine as Kellen Clemens, the junior from Burns, Oregon, brings his squad to the line of scrimmage. Going to go back to the shotgun now. Three receivers to the far side. The shovel pass, and that hit wrapped up right there at the 30. There's the speed, Lance Mitchell. That's the uh, play that Lee Gross Cup made famous at Utah. A little shuffle pass. You know, it's a terrific play, but if it's covered well like they did here, you're not going to get anything out of it. Everywhere I've ever coached, it's been called Utah. That's all we call it. Right or left Utah. That's it. Shuffle pass. Uh, That's Lance, the couple. Lance Mitchell showed there he has no linger effects from his knee injury. Uh, he had last year missed the season just as quick as the year before. Led the team in tackles the year before that. The senior from San Francisco did. So third and 11. Clements. Hit as he throws. The ball is loose. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Larry Burdine, the sophomore from Watton, Oklahoma, got there. They calling out a fumble? He ruled incomplete pass right away. How about that? Larry Burdine kind of skated around the outside like he likes that ice skating we heard yesterday. Right there. <laughs> That's good call. He was coming forward. Yes, he was coming forward. Yeah, the first college football player I've ever heard. It's a figure skating. Watches fan, you yeah. on figure skating. How about that? You're right there in Oklahoma. I tell you, he's one of the few six foot five, 255 pound figure skating fans in the world. <laughs> <laughs> few. <laughs> the sole one. Antonio Perkins, there you see the eight returns for touchdowns. Of course, three against UCLA last year. And it's David Dittman, the junior, the transfer from Reading, California, out there for a second punt. And a line drive punt. Perkins trying to come over to return it, but they're going to boo him every, yeah, punt. every time. Yeah, field position. That's what we said. You cannot do that every snap without losing, losing incredible field position. But what do you do? Well, the last one was 54 yards. That's fine. But this one's only 37 yes. yards. Well, the last one hit and rolled. Back to Norman in a moment. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months in American Revolution. Dr. Pepper and your Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. Oklahoma taking over first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. 5.06 left in this first quarter. So Jason White, the Heisman winner, one of eight to win it and return facing this defense from Oregon. Well, and they're setting the pace here for the Ducks. This has been impressive because here's Matson comes with pressure here. And then, of course, Long with the strip and the sack, he takes it away from White. As long as they do that, every minute goes by, their confidence continues to build. Peterson in now in the backfield, gets the call, fights his way across the 35 to the 37. We're talking about Larry Burdine being a figure skating fan. Let's get more on that from Sam Ryan. And Terry, Jamal Brown is his cousin. When I asked him to describe Larry Burdine, he said, you know, he's weird, he's sensitive and stuff. Well, Larry said, hey, I do have a soft side. I grew up with three sisters. He picked up these when he was a teenager. Danielle Steele novel. He said he read about three or four of them. He also told me he watches Lifetime television for women. He loves those movies of the week. And then he did confess 
to figure skating. He said Oksana Bayulteri is his favorite. The only college football player that's ever known the name Alexei Yagudin. Yes. They could even say it. I know. Well, you, you really can't take the guy, you know, and, and cut him down for that. I mean, the same interest as Terry Gannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, take that 2 2 off on third and three. White out of the gun. Quick out, now Will Peoples, and a first down for the Sooners. Yeah, although they were playing man coverage on defense, still so much uh, uh, respect they're giving, play too far off. You're not doing any good playing man coverage that far off. That's their game plan. It's unquestionable yeah, now. It's obvious they're trying to get as much pressure up front as they possibly can. They're filling the running lanes, and they're playing and trying to keep everything in front of them in the secondary, which tells me this is not one of the best duck secondaries that they've had. I mean, they lost Stephen Moore and, of course, Keith Lewis last year. They're, they're trying to keep everybody in front of them. The team that was uh, 103rd in pass defense yes. last year. So it's it's not been a strength of this Oregon program for the last couple of years. Keywon Jones near another first down into Oregon territory. That's the Oklahoma zone running play. They don't have many running plays, but the zone play right here, watch. He can take those linemen, zone out, they step forward, they block whoever gets in front of them, and the back can cut any lane. He finds a lane and just keeps running to it. One play, three or four different ways it can break. Gain of eight for Keywon Jones, the workhorse already this afternoon. Got nicked up, as I said last week. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time against Houston. Moses in motion. Here comes Keywon, cuts back. Wrapped up, fights his way down to the 42. Almost stopped shy of the first down, but fought his way. And it was Nada who was in there, Haloni Nada, initially who hit him, a sophomore from Salt Lake City who missed most of last year with a knee injury. A reminder, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Here comes your history lesson, fellas. Oklahoma has never lost to Oregon in its history. Is that a true or false? <laughs> oh, that's a fact. Well, I'm waiting for something else. That's a fact. 4-0 against them. White looking for people's overthrow as the intended. Had a lot open there. Uh, Should have made the completion right there. Pupils number 29. Depending on the play, number 31. The last time these two teams met, though, was back in 1975. And I want to say this again, although their confidence is going up with Oregon, they've been on the field a long time. A lot of guys are sweating. The humidity is getting to them. They may have confidence, but you got to wonder how much water they're going to have in their bodies in the second half. Although Bilotti told us before the game, he wants them to be able to work for everything they get. He wants long drives because this is a quick strike offense, and so far he's held them pretty tough. White, 5 of 7, 64 yards. They keep it on the ground this time, though. Kewan Jones to the 40. No, you're exactly right, Timmy. This is exactly what uh, Mike Bellotti wants to happen for Oregon. Everything is hard to get. When it's hard to get, it takes time. You come into this game, and you know that under Bob Stoops, Oklahoma's had 187 scoring drives of two minutes or less. You say, if we can make them earn for every every inch they get here, we're doing okay. Over, over 100 points in their first two games this year. They can score points. Third and nine, and so a four-receiver set. Right out of the gun. Behind. Toss it out. Here's his back. Keywon Jones got a load of room. One out of bounds inside the 20 at the 17 by Justin Finnessy. Boy, that was set up so nicely. They felt that Oregon was being so aggressive and pressuring upfield that they just said, all right, let him come, well, and we'll set the screen. Third and long, the, the defensive line wants to get to the quarterback, see how much they pressure, and the linebackers know they've got a pass that needs to be 10 yards deep, but they forgot about the screen. It takes advantage of deep drops and quick pass rush. Separation between defensive linemen and the secondary. Nice block. And now it's just how much he can get. Gain of 23 for Kiwan. So first and 10 at the 18. Gets the call on the ground and fights his way for maybe a yard and a half, two yards. David Fayeteta on the hit. Freshman from Medford, Oregon. A lot of youngsters on this team for the Oregon Ducks. We lost seven starters off this defense, a couple to the NFL. Two off the defensive line but to, you know, early in the second round, and uh, the coaches felt like their defensive line, though, would again be the strength of their defense. 
great tradition of defensive line with Oregon. Brings up second and nine. Peterson in for Jones. Here comes Adrian dancing and now lowering the shoulders and straight into the line inside the 15 to the 14. Peterson who gained him almost 3,000 yards in his senior season of high school. That's amazing. You know, offensive running backs coach Cale Gundy just reads off his numbers like an auctioneer. 6'2", 210, 4'4", speed in the 40-yard dash, 11-foot broad jump, 39-inch vertical leap. He knows all these numbers. So what you do is you just reload. You let Jones bang him down most of the first quarter. Now you bring in a young freshman with fresh legs. That's like a sickle and hammer. Got another one, too, D.J. Wolf, a freshman who uh, they say is almost as good as Peterson. White looking for room. Down he goes. So the Oregon defense coming up big again. They had the sack. They forced a fumble on the last series, and now they, they dump White to the turf. Doing a great job. Oh, the second time looks like they've stopped him in the red zone or at least held him to a field goal attempt. And although Jason's been more mobile, you'll see the quarterback, his mobility has been good, but either the receivers have got to get open or you've got to hold the pressure. J.D. Nelson was the guy who fired early, Tim. They're playing on the edge, Terry. They're not taking them head up. They're playing on the edge. They're stepping a little bit, kind of shoot the gaps, and they're slanting a lot, forcing them one way. So Trey DiCarlo on for a try for 35 yards. Going to place it down right at the 25. But not before we hear the gun, which scares me to death every time I hear that thing here. Nothing, nothing at the end of one. Who would have thunk it? Well... The longer we go, the more confidence Oregon has as they hang in here. So uh, scoreless tie at the end of the first. Back with more from Norman after this message and a word from our ABC station. welcomes you back to this week's BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. Back in Norman for the start of the second quarter and uh, Trey DiCarlo about to let fly with a 35-yard field goal try. Last week, Oregon at this time in their opener against Indiana, at the end of the first quarter, they were down 20 to nothing. And now here on the road in Norman, it's a scoreless tie at the end of the first. Yeah, they had had, uh, I want to say, uh, Two fumble punts and a fumble quarterback, uh, an interception, quarterback fumbled and an interception that led. They have no turnover so far. DiCarlo almost blocked, but he gets it up and it is good. So the junior from Carrollton, Texas, putting the Sooners on the board first. He's money. He's money. Single season NCAA record holder with 74 PATs last season. Field goals, as you mentioned, now he's three for four on the year. He is just a solid kicker. So you get down in the red zone, you get a good snap. You know you're going to get points. On a hot day here in Norman, we welcome you back to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. The Sooners on the board first with the field goal, 35 yards from Trey DiCarlo, and he will now kick off to Ryan Shaw and Kenny Washington back deep for the Ducks, who have to be feeling pretty good about themselves right now here on the road, Terry. Exactly. They, were, they had such a poor game to start with last week. We mentioned... Uh, already the seven turnovers, but their you know, underdogs, so big underdogs, to be close right now is a confidence builder. You saw number 20, Kenny Washington, there. He had a 100 yard touchdown return to ball back last week. Pac 10 uh, first team kick return of the year last year. And that's how you beat it. Yeah, yes. That's how you stop it. There he nor Ryan Shaw with a chance to return that one from DiCarlo. They bring it out to the 20, and we send it down to Sam Ryan. All right, Terry, you guys were talking about the heat, an issue here today. High 90s in Norman, but look at this on the field, 110 degrees. This is hot. This is something that Coach Mike Bellotti of the Oregon Ducks was concerned about earlier in the week. I spoke to their head trainer. He said they started hydrating the players on Monday. They monitored their weight charts just to make sure nobody was slacking on their fluids. They brought extra IV fluids and electrolyte tablets in case there's a problem, guys. Uh, Sam was only 64 degrees when they left Eugene yesterday. I don't think Sam sweats, you know. <laughs> I died on the field yesterday. I was soaking wet. She's so cool. 
He's sweating a cooler. <laughs> Clements on the run, gonna flip it out. Big hit as Rosario caught it and took the punishment for it, but a guy who certainly is a solid receiver for this Oregon Duck offense. We go back to John in New York. Well, Terry, it's time for Craig James' Pontiac game-changing performance. You think so, big man? Well, Rasheed Marshall gets Chris Henry in the end zone. West Virginia, in the past four years, couldn't deal with Maryland. Today, Maryland, five turnovers. West Virginia took care of them. They get the win in overtime after Maryland had got a few goal on their first chance. Johnny got a little heated here in the booth. Come on, on fellas. Let's get up with Maryland. Maryland's got 36 guys with four years of eligibility left. The pups. Can you tell? Tim and Maryland grad. There's still Mountaineers. Tim Day, the tight end on the catch across the 30 out to the 33. They will utilize Day often in this game. A game of nine. Well, couldn't have been any closer for you two guys. I had to separate you a couple times, though. There's going to be some couches burning in the oh, streets of Morgan. <laughs> hey, that's my home now. Stop Come on. It. It's I've been execution. there many a time. You got a big target, Tim Day. You heard McNabb say last week, hey, the guy's six foot four, he's always open. Coming off that foot surgery, and he was questionable uh, coming into the season. Maxwell in motion, they operate out of the eye. And they're going to run it over the right side, stumbling ahead of the 35 to the 37. And yeah, that was Terrence Whitehead, the junior from L.A. Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. Well, you know, you talk about Oregon's offense preparing for Oklahoma. They didn't look at Bowling Green or Houston. They went back and looked at Kansas State, LSU, two back offenses that run the football and do the things they do. And that's what they saw. When the players saw those, they saw two teams that also won the football game. Temperature continues to rise. Look at that thing. Second and eight for the Ducks. Crowd trying to get the defense into this. Quick out, complete. Demetrius Williams, a big play receiver across the 45. He should have an Oregon first down. Gain of nine on the play. Got plenty. A reminder this fall on ABC. They survived the crash, but can they survive the unknown? Lost premieres Wednesday. 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Good-looking promo. Eric, Eric Bassett that time made a poor pursuit angle. If you saw that, took the wrong angle, and the receiver ran right past him. So they moved the change, first and 10, for Kellen Clemens, who shared time with Jason Fife last year. The job is his, going up top to Williams, and there's the contact, there's the flag. Eric Bassi on the coverage, but Demetrius Williams went down hard. You know, Williams, very emotional guy, but he's got to be careful. I, you saw that official, the back judge there, looking at him. You don't want to throw a flag on that when you just got the call for interference. Yeah, and for Bassi, uh, Eric Bassi, this is tough because you're trying to cover the receiver. The ball is thrown way on your other side. The receiver ran through you. Watch here. Eric Bassi's covering the field very good. He's playing perfect position. Well, watch the ball thrown past him to the other side. The receiver runs into him. Pass you... interference on number 13 of the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Because the last step, that, that Auto... receiver's got every right to go after that football. In the last 10 steps, he never even put his head back to look where the ball was. He was looking at the receiver and ran right into him. That's a good call. I'm just saying Eric Bassey could not have done anything to, uh, he had to watch the receiver's eyes to find the ball. Never would he have thought that ball was on his backside. It's interference anyway, and it's a good call. Whitehead in at tailback. Out to the 15-yarder. They spot it just inside the 40. Clements with time. He's at plenty of that. Williams just driven out of bounds. Rufus Alexander, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, and a little extracurricular after the play, but you hear the, the Rouge here in Memorial Stadium. They love this youngster. And, and look at him. See, he's a confident guy. Here's his seventh catch of the year. He had 129 receiving yards last week. He averages 26 yards every catch. But the guy comes all the way across the field. He's got that long stride, so he's hard to keep up with, especially when you're isolated on a linebacker or a safety. So he is very, very dangerous. Well, that's great speed from Alexander. Though. Oh, he, well, he, got, he got his first spark start today because of the way in which he can play all over the field. Second and nine. They're on the option here, and Clemens going to keep it. 
almost to the 35, but a flag is down just area. outside the 40. Rufus Alexander on the hip once the again. This is a different ball club than we Rufus saw last week. I mean, they're playing with confidence. Clemens is, is throwing the ball on a rope, showing good arm strength. This is, this is a good performance by Oregon. Well, Oregon also, they're not changing the personnel. They're just giving so many multiple looks. They're giving Oklahoma this look, that look. They spread them out, all kinds of different looks, and uh, they really don't know how to line up the same way twice. But they haven't turned the ball over once. Well, that's uh, Therein obviously. lies the key. Obviously, that's the most important thing, and that's what the seven turnovers last week. Can they correct that in one week? Yes, Off they can. Offside on number 80 number of the defense. 80. He lined up in the lined neutral zone. The penalty is five yards. It's still second down. I'll tell you, it's Oklahoma, Terry, making all the mistakes. Dan Cody, the senior who just made that mistake, and uh, all Big 12 performer, one of the best in the nation, and uh, allowing Oregon to move the ball right down the field. Oregon with no penalties in the game. Top of your screen right here. I mean, you know Clements is not a great option runner, but it gives them something else uh, to have to look for. Kenny Washington, the senior from Brea, California, now in that tailback. Going to give it to him. Dances one way, cuts and stopped at the 32. Again, the ruse hail down. It's Alexander. Load them up, boys. Yeah. Come in and just load them up. Look like you're going to go right in between the tackles. And then maybe just slice a dead nine technique. What do you like on third and three? I like to get I, off that. I, I like Tim Day. I like to fake the play action, that big tight end. The tight end position has always been big uh, with Oregon. Tim Day, number 85. Let's see if he's part of this. They've had some great ones through the years. Quick drop, quick throw, complete. First down, big hit at the 27, but what a catch. Marcus Maxwell, he held on to it. Well, they had two, two receivers hooking out. It was either going to be Tim Day, and if they covered him, it was going to be Maxwell, the wide receiver. Or was that Williams? Maxwell with the catch. Maxwell? Senior from Hercules, California. You come from a town named Hercules, you got to be a football player. Weightlifter. Kellen Clemens throwing the ball so well. That formation, they created some space by formation. Washington again in that tailback for Whitehead. Give it to him on the draw. Big hole initially to the 23. It closes quickly there, but well, the Ducks continue to move it. There's a late flag back at the 16. It's a personal foul on somebody that late. We don't know which side. We'll have to wait for the official. Came out of the secondary. You like the fact that they're naming the uh, numbers this year for the first time in college football? You know, they started doing that halfway through my profession, telling the coaches what number. It was wonderful. I think it allows the fans to under who understand the game and want to know what's going on, it allows them to be in the game all even more. Yes. It would have been embarrassing when I was playing. I was the most penalized you, guy in the ACC. You, you led the league, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. Yeah. Get that brand and out and, of there. And a cheap shot artist. Get that brand out of there. <laughs> No, it's good for the game. It's good for those who watch on TV, those in the stands get a chance to, to decide for themselves who broke down, the, where the play broke down. There was no foul on the play. Boy, the Boo Birds out today, huh? They're either ruse or booze. Right now, they're booze. Took a long time to decide that, but Clements looking to the sideline, get the call. It's second and six now if you're the quarterback your mindset is we're down here we've got to get points we're in the red zone we've got to get points but you can't turn the ball over yeah I still I'd like to pass here and the run on third down I love gonna keep it on the ground Washington trying to get outside can't get there and there's another face mask it's that, face mask against Oklahoma and it's gonna be for dying well, second down, though, if you're trying to get six, a six points instead of three, it's a great play action down. That was the other way. The field, the penalty was the other way, I guess. Pointed at Oregon. Did they really? Watch this. Watch Berdine come in. Actually, he had the back of the helmet. Yeah, but That's you a legal hit the helmet. Play. That's a legal play. No, you can grab the helmet. I didn't think you could grab the helmet. Can't grab the face mask. The face mask, I know. I guess so. There may be a hold against Oregon. With the call Grabbing out. the face mask by the offense, number 55. Are you kidding me? Penalty is 15 yards and replay second down. Wow. 
Yeah, Mike Bellotti saying, where? Where was that? I saw Verdine do it, but so Anoka Lucas, the center, is called for the face mask. Hey fellas, this is a terrific football game. Both teams playing well. Let's try to show this thing and where's the face mask? They went face mask to face mask. There it is, his right hand. His right hand yeah. for Dine. Yeah, I can see it. it the, the center got his hand too high. He's trying to push off on the shoulder pads. His head, hand slid right up into the face. Quick moment that his finger was on there, but a uh, good call by the official. So, second and long. Clements under pressure just throws this one away. Garen Strong was there, but uh, he threw it out of bounds. Dante Nicholson was all over it. It was a great call last see, week. See what he's saying? He's saying he was still in the pocket. He was still in the pocket. Let's see if he gets out of the tackle box. He can't throw it like that unless he's out of the tackle box. Pretty close. Yeah, but you know what's good about this? Last week, he threw interceptions. When it wasn't there, he forced it. Although I thought they he had called a, it. Yeah. You know what? The, the receiver was over there. He had to throw over the defender. Oh, I don't know. Tim Strong was there, but he threw it about four rows deep into the stands. Well, it's close, so you're, now you're out of field goal range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to call that. I think you got to call that because he threw it so high up, he wasn't trying to throw near his Intentional receiver. Intentional grounding on the offense. There was no receiver in the area, and the pass was still in the pocket. It's a loss of down, third down. Bob Stoops made that call. You think? You saw it. Right away, you could read his lips. We he had a great picture of it. And there was a receiver over on the sideline, maybe, not, maybe it? not in the third row. Yeah, I was going to say, this, if you throw it 40 yards over his head, I'm not sure that's in the area. And Bellotti's right. He's yelling at him, saying that was a late flag, and you let Stoops call it. Here's your receiver right here. He's near the tackle box. Here comes the pass over here. I, I think Mike Bellotti's got it. He's, he's got a good reason to be upset. Yeah, there was a receiver there. Garrett Strong was there, but it's going to bring up third and 32 remember the ducks were knocking on the door just a few moments ago <laughs> clemens out to rosario nothing doing there it's a midfield that's it uh, that's like that's chum to a shark right there i mean these guys they can smell it they've got them backed up they know the screen's coming and they attacked it you know, every all week long, third long situations, every good defense in the country, they rep the screen. We saw where Oklahoma hit the screen on third and ten and went for a long game. That's just everybody's playbook. Look for the screen on third and long. Well, you think Carl Pendleton can't he run can for a run. guy that's 277? Wow. There were eight crimson and cream jerseys around Rosario that time, and Perkins can't wait to get his hands on this one. Hasn't been able to touch one yet. David Dittman to punt it away. He's going to get a chance. Got a chance to bring this one back. Perkins slammed to the ground, though, at the 26. What a hit. Justin Andrews. He was tackled there Only a 27-yard punt, but he wasn't going anywhere. They were making sure of that. Great coverage, but the bottom line is right there. He was out of the pocket. This is what Terry Bowden needs on the road with him at all times so to keep the sweats away. How about that? Those are cool down caps. We, we talked about the humidity problem. They're going to try to prevent it, to be preventative in this and uh, and get it before it happens. All these headgears are, are icing down and lowering the temperature uh, and getting, keeping that head cool is awful big. We don't want any hot hits. 96 <laughs> degrees here. Uh, although it's, the clouds have rolled in a little bit, so I think the, the sun has gone down at least for the moment. White looking back. That's Dante Hickson who catches it in the backfield and the ball's loose, but after the whistle. Marquise Benz made a great play, Terry. He read it from the get-go. It was a backside screen. He read it. He reacted. He made the tackle one-on-one. -on -one. This is perfect. You know, they play smart. You talk about a fast defense. This defense doesn't necessarily have speed. They have accuracy of movement. They go the right direction quickly. Quickly. The only thing is, as a coach, you tell him, all right, keep your feet, though. He went to his knees on the tackle. Keep your feet run through him. But that was one heck of a football play. Oregon is recognized as a fast defense because of how quickly they get the ball. They don't have the great, great speed like Oklahoma. Clayton goes in motion. Hickson again in that tailback out of the gun. 
is White. Quick throw right through the hands of Travis Wilson. Should have had it. Well, time now for our Aflac trivia question. Last time these two teams met, here's your question. How many pass attempts did Oklahoma quarterback Dean Blevins, former uh, colleague of ours, have in that game? There's a reason why Jason White is uh, setting records at Oklahoma and why part of the answer to that question. That's right. <laughs> Got to be looking for number nine right here, Mark Clayton. Third and 13 again out of the gun. Looking for Bradley this time. He's got it at the 40. Nice catch. He stayed inbounds. Mark Bradley, the senior transfer from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. But you know, he had uh, uh, Mark Clayton open right below him. I thought he was going to Mark Clayton, but he had both of them open. Went for the deeper route. A uh, little tougher completion, but he gets it to him. Runs him off. It's a good play here by the DB, though. Stayed with him. That's a great throw and a great catch because the coverage was perfect by Gibson. Well, they blitzed the secondary and did not get to the quarterback on time. When you do that, you're going to get somebody open. Gain of he 17. Wasn't he wasn't open by much. No, no. number eight, nine was. Flags before the play. Adrian Peterson has got to come back. I mean, if you're that DB and you're the coach, you tell him, hey, that's great coverage, son. You're going to get one of those. You'll pick it off. Not much more you can do. Well, that was just a perfect throw. Mark Clayton was Prior the Prior to the snap, a false start on number 52 of the offense. Penalties five yards, still first down. No, Mark Clayton was the receiver that, that was wide open. Uh, he just wanted to get the longer yardage, so he had to throw it perfect. Chris Bush going to disagree with all of us. He doesn't like the fact that they call out the numbers now. <laughs> I tell you, the thing that jumps out at me, Terry, that's three penalties now against Oklahoma here in the first. First half. Well, you saw Jason White miss a pass a little, a little bit high. They're just a little bit off. Inside give. Peterson with a big hole. Bouncing outside. Across the 40, one out of bounds. Inside the 35, the freshman Adrian Peterson. Gain of 32 and a key block from Jamal Brown to spring him. The key for Oregon is that they haven't given up big plays. The reason it's only three to nothing, Oklahoma has had no plays over 25 yards until now. The freshman Adrian Peterson. Here's his read. These guys cheat up at the line. Watch, just before the snap, they'll all come up on the line of scrimmage. Watch this. Here they come. Let it go now. Look at it. Here they come. He reads it, and then that just opens it up. Knows if you get past that line of scrimmage, you've got some room to run because everybody was cheating up on the line. You know, they don't audible a lot, but they have either ors at the line, run it this way or that way based upon what you just showed us. Based upon the defenders being on the left side, he checked off to he the play on the to right. The left. Peterson on first down, ahead for maybe one. Inside hands on to Adrian Peterson. Jerry Matson on the stop. Make the tackle number 37. A grad Edmund student Andrews. from Edmonds, Washington. Already have, has his degree in business. <laughs> Quick snap, leaping over his. Peterson run out of bounds. Well, here's a guy who's 6'2", 210, a true freshman who comes in along with D.J. Wolf, another true freshman, with Kiwan Jones ahead of both of them as there is a flag down on the far side of the field. Terry, everybody in Couple Oklahoma is anxious to see Peterson find the confidence he had in high school. Number one player in the nation last year, ran for 32 touchdowns. He is special. But you know, he's fit in very well with the team. You got Kawan Jones. You don't just set him down. It, they're still got the first teamer, the young guy coming up. They're going to trade reps. So it's not like he has to move to first team. Let's just share the reps, be a team. They'll also use DJ Wolf. But that's what I'm talking yeah. about, building the confidence. Right. And that'll come with time. But the reps are very important. I mean, the guy bench presses the world. He's only a freshman. And Terry, you mentioned he's 210, 6'2, 210. You talked to his teammates, like Jason White. And he said yesterday, with all the raw talent, remember, he is still learning. He's just running right now. Substitution infraction by number 92 of the defense. Penalties five yards. We'll replay second down. And that's what drives a coach crazy in uh, what they had last week, the penalties and the mistakes. But they've limited those for the most part here in the first half. Sometimes, though, Terry, that's the coach. He makes a call late, and the guy tries oh. to get off the field. Yep. He gets he gets caught. By all means, it's the coach in that situation. See, that's where they ought to call the coach's name. On the <laughs> Hold it now. Let's not go that far. Second and four. Willie Roberts in motion. Give it inside. 
Peterson still on his feet inside the 20 to the 19. We saw the speed a moment ago. Now we see the leg drop. Now, if I say to you, watch number 28 run, but think of Marcus Dupree. I mean, there's a big similarity. Yeah, you can go there. Uh, and, I, and I did too. I felt the same way thinking about Marcus Dupree back, uh, back in my time uh, in the day. He reminds me so much of Marcus Dupree. But a freshman can play earlier at running back because so much of that is uh, instinctive. You don't, you can't coach this stuff here. That's that's instinctive. The maturity comes in just handling the pressure of playing in front of all these people on national TV. Gain of seven. First and ten. White looking to the air. Peoples almost picked off. And another good play for Marcus Benz. Intended for Will Peoples. Don't forget, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John Craig and former Notre Dame All-American Aaron Taylor will have highlights and analysis and pick the mid-major they think has the best shot at a BCS birth. That's Valvoline Halftime Show coming up 7.25 left until half. Binge. Second and ten. The numbers for his career, but that doesn't tell the entire story. Plays like uh, what we just saw. Nowhere to go for Hickson. Wrapped up behind the line. Devin Long. Long's playing a great game. He really is. He's coming off the edge. He's stepping. He's making plays. He's getting into gaps. He's already got a sack. He's stripped him with a football. This time he comes across and makes a tackle for a loss. Just look at him here at the bottom of your screen. Splits the blockers. And by splitting the blockers, uses that quickness to make the tackle for a loss. He was on honorable all, all conference last year. They were expecting big things out of him. And like we said, two players went early in the second round last year off the defensive line into the NFL, but they expect that to be the strength of line of their team here. Now, this is a critical play before the half for Oregon. They've been terrific today and throughout the season on third down. See if they can pick this one up. Long pressures wide, but complete over the middle inside the 10. All the way down inside the five. Mark Clayton with another big third down catch. Every one of his catches last week was on third down. And he caught the ball with two yards left to go to get the first down. They did not throw it for, for the first down. What they like, like Clayton. Look at number nine here. He sets down a couple of yards short of the first down, but he uses his effort, his running ability, his drive to make that first down. Well, first of all, you say you put Clayton in the slot. You make him the inside receiver. He's got the entire field to work. When they sit in a zone like that, he just finds the open area and sit down. And he's working against linebackers and defensive ends, not cornerbacks, and, and that's what uh, Oklahoma wants to do. First and goal from the four. White sends Wilson in motion. Peterson, the backfield, throw to the end zone. Touchdown. That's the big tight end, Bubba Moses. Impressive drive for the Sooners and disheartening for the Oregon defense. They've played so long, so hard, with so many big plays, but they find themselves 10 points down after all that effort. That's disheartening. They gave up one big play to Adrian Peterson. And Rocky, if you're going to have play action on goal line, first and 10 on first down is where you want to throw play action because the defense assumes you're going to run the football first down. Great time to throw play action. J.D. Nelson had the tight end, lost him, never covered him. Moses was wide open. But it was the big play that changed things. It changed that drive from a long drive to a short drive. Clayton with the big third down catch. James Bubba Moses with the touchdown. To Carlo on for the extra point. Trey to Carlo. Making it 10 0. Oklahoma. You can talk moral victory all you want for Oregon, but. You come in 0-1 and you play as well as they have in the first half. They have to be uh, down at this point. It's 10-0 sooner. Saturn, people first. Gap, how do you wear it? The Hartford Mutual Funds, official corporate partner of the NCAA. And AOL for broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. Beautiful campus, isn't it? Saw the seed sower there on the campus of OU. Gave you the Aflac trivia question a few moments ago. Last time these two teams met, how many pass attempts did Oklahoma quarterback Dean Blevins have? A little bit different than what we're seeing today. The answer 
is five. He attempted five passes, and they won 62 to seven. That's the way they used to play. But, but he had 47 pitches, you know. That's right. Yeah, that's he was a wishbone quarter. And after those five passes, arm was sore. Number 27, Moses with his first touchdown catch, and the scoring drive, an impressive one. Three and a half minutes off the clock. And White has been right on with most of his passes today. Out of the end zone is Kenny Washington, so they'll bring it out to the 20. 10 0, and it just doesn't seem like it should be 10 0. Oregon playing very well here on the road, but the shooters have been tough. The Ducks take over when we come back. Oklahoma up 10 0 over Oregon, and coach, look at this 15 13 of uh, time of possession, and then 32 total yards for Oregon. That's it. Well, Oregon has done a great job of keeping this game close. Uh, they got to the red zone one time. The face mask, the uh, downing of the ball uh, hurt them, but it's almost like, in a way, they're holding on. And you got to wonder how long they can hold on because 32 yards of total offense uh, is not a lot to show. Take over first down at their own 20. And Washington finds a hole, knocks the umpire over out at the 30-yard line. Close to a first down. Nice job of putting helmets on the linebackers there. Both linebackers blocked and a split the scene. Probably the most, most positive uh, run they've had this game. Umpire's part of the field. He's got to get out of the way. That's not a good play on his part. Got to keep his head on a swivel and get out of the way. You know, keep in mind, Oregon was down in the red zone and came away with no points. You see, that umpire's got to get out of there. He just got caught in the wrong place. Can't do that. Call it a gain of nine, so it's second and one. Kellen Clements going to throw on second and one. Why not take a shot? He's got his man across the 40 to the 42. It's Tim Day, that big tight end, the junior from Las Vegas. He is so big, and again, he was hurt in preseason. Uh, didn't quite get ready for the first game. Wasn't able to do much. Oregon has always utilized their tight end. They feel like this guy is going to be a great, great player before the end of the season. You mentioned that injury was a, uh, he had a foot injury, then he had a knee injury. But he's back solid now. You mentioned he's a big target. He's 6'4", 270, but he runs like a receiver. I mean, he's he's a horse. And some great tight ends. And look at the numbers on Clemens, who's been accurate. But Peel and Weaver, Ted Weaver, going on to the NFL. Quick throw. Behind the line of scrimmage. Quick strike out to the freshman Cameron Colvin, who is from Pittsburgh, California, De La Salle High School. Coming into this ball game, Kellen Clemens said, this game will show how much character we have as a team. Clemens has taken his team on his shoulders. He's played extremely well here today. He's throwing the ball hard. He's throwing it with confidence. Look at him. He's clapping his hands. He's telling everybody, let's go. He's trying to get points on the board before the half ends. They should have had him before. A couple mental mistakes took him out of field goal range, but they were down deep in Oklahoma territory. How much difference a week makes after all the mistakes last week. And you know, he told us he's still learning his leadership role, the leadership side of it, but last year was huge. He's was starting every game, but sharing duties with uh, Jason Fife. They called that last one a, a lateral, by the way. It was behind the line of scrimmage. Business administration major, very smart guy. Grew up on a ranch with 170 head of cattle and no television set. you got to be kidding me. How do, you, how do you live? I, I have six children. I couldn't live without a television set. <laughs> run me out of the house. That ranch has been in his family for six generations. Terry, you read when you don't have television sets. What's that? Not you a bad. Read. He's smart. He's a smart guy. Whitehead carrying Whitehead close to a first down. Not. Are you saying as opposed to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I, I, we watch History Channel, okay? <laughs> we, we, we studied the TV. So. Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Uh, you better say you watch ABC. ABC the all the time. There you go. That's right. We watch ABC News all the time and get our news. Just an average of two yards per carry for Whitehead so far here today. They measure, and it is a duck first down. So you got 356 left until half, and again, they move the chains. It's a very, very good drive he's got going here. He's just got to manage the clock, manage what takes place. No turnovers, no penalties. And you don't have to hurry here. You want to use all of that four minutes, 356. And they had a great drive last time. Like you said, got into the red zone, a good long drive. They're continuing to do that right now. Need to they, get points there. They had 32 total yards to start this drive. They've got 32 yards in this drive. So 64 overall. 
Lemons, the straight drop. Under pressure, the ball is loose. Did the Ducks get it? They're still scrambling for it. I'm thinking Oklahoma got that ball there now. The Sooners got it. Look at the line judge. The lineman make that call from where he was. Clint Ingram came flying. And Mike Bellotti may see turnovers in his sleep again in his nightmares tonight after what happened last week with the seven turnovers. And now they start to move the ball. And here's another one. Well, Clemens never saw him. He's looking no. downfield. He's going through his progression. Now, here comes the pressure. Boom. Got him high. Ball's loose. Not much a quarterback can do in that situation. He's already ready to throw the ball. He's focused on his receiver. He's already getting ready to throw. The arm hasn't gone back yet. You got to give him a little more time than that. Came high to head, though. I mean, that's uh, that was awfully close. His hand was up that helmet again, that face mask area. So now the Sooners have three minutes and 33 seconds until half. Taking over inside Oregon territory, Adrian Peterson reverses field. Keeps the legs driving, but stops right at the 49. Devin Long, strong junior. That's a big turnover because, you know, we were talking to Dan Cody yesterday. He said, we've been working on turnovers. We've been working on strips. This is a team that came into this game with only two turnovers. So they put a point of emphasis on that. They said, we got to turn this ball over. And so there they've got one, and it's big. And he talked about how they worked on it in the offseason, how they worked on stripping the ball. And if they're the second guy to the ball, go for the ball and not for the man. And uh, it's really been a factor for them to cause turnovers this year. Call this sudden change. Want to score right now. Hickson in at tailback. Here he is. Can't get away from the grasp of Devin Long again, who and we've called his name often already. So White accurate on the afternoon. Saw the touchdown strike to Bubba Moses on the last drive. And not much going on in this drive so far. Brings up another third down. And again, the Sooners have been terrific on third down. Two for two, I believe, on third and short. Uh, in fact, they haven't even been close. We'll see what they do here. The last one was a strike over the middle to Clayton, which set up the touchdown to Moses. Now, this is a situation, 10 to nothing, where I might take a big deep shot uh, uh, and go for a deep one. The only difference is they... Oklahoma. Oklahoma. First time First out. Time out. Boy, you talk about clock management, perfect. They let the play clock go almost all the way down before they call that timeout. 2.05 to go in the half. Clock management by OU. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. This game's closer than it looks on the scoreboard, but this play was huge. White, he goes to Clayton. They're down in the red zone. White gets him back up to the line of scrimmage, finds his tight end. The safety missed him. Tight end slides back into the end zone and touchdown Jason White. And it's 10 nothing Oklahoma. How good have the Sooners been on third down? Six of eight on third down today. The last two conversions were third and 13 and third and 16. So this is the third and we'll call it 10, a long 10. Out of the gun. Under pressure, down wow. he goes. So. Six of nine on third down now. Jerry Matson all over Jason White. Between Matson and Long, those two ducks have been playing extremely well all day. Third and inches, though. I mean, after the sack, there's a sack by Matson. Third and inches, fake the ball and throw deep. Don't jump in the gun. But you see what they did there, coach? They ran a twist, little, little behind stunt. Matson came free. Nobody ever picked him up. Untouched. Aaron Gibson back deep, waiting for the punt from Blake Ferguson. So they picked up the first downs on third and 13 and third and 16, but couldn't do it on third and 10. Long count. End over end punt. Can he get there? No, all the way into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. 58-yard punt. You'd like to get a couple of those back. Don't forget, we got the Valvoline halftime show coming your way with John, Craig, and Aaron in just a few moments. We're going to take a look at uh, who they think the mid-major will be that uh, has the best shot at a BCS berth. John handling the ball awfully well for a big guy. How about this big guy handling the ball? At the Heisman folks? <laughs> That's all right. We're thrilled to have Terry out of the studio. Made the traveling squad. We got him with him up here in the booth. I'm back in the middle, folks. Love it. Out to the real world. Out to the X and Owen place. 
you got to call it like it is. Ducks, X and O this. How do you get points on the board for the Ducks? Yeah, I got a minute nine now. They take over first and ten at the 20. Rosario, the lone setback. Clements throws it out, complete out of bounds, and there's Marcus Maxwell, the catch. Second catch of the afternoon for him. Clock stops. Well, most importantly, you throw it to the sideline. You throw it once either out of bounds or caught. Don't throw across the middle dangerously because 10 to nothing isn't so bad at halftime. 13 or 70 to nothing is. No, I tell you, you guys are all over it, though. Work those corners. Work those corners. Why? Because Perkins and Macy, the, the cornerbacks for Oklahoma, are both six feet. These guys that they're throwing to, well, you look at Maxwell, there's 6'4. You got Day 6'4. You got Williams, 6'2 and a half. Use that mismatch. Go after these corners right here. Clement's going to throw it out on the screen, oh, and what a goodness. hit. Rosario caught it, but Rufix Alexander. Now you know why they call him Rue and chant his name every play. This is his first start, but it won't be his last. Um, this guy is going to be something special. The speed is what he got. You can't coach speed. Watch him outrun the, the blockers. Yeah, he dropped it before he had control, so... They're going to call it an incomplete pass, and that's a good call. Stites has to get out there and make that block. He was slow getting out there, and that was the difference. Maxwell and Williams to the near side. Three receivers set. Sooner showing blitz. Here they come. Pick it up nicely initially, but nowhere. And look at Clemens just moving the pile. Across the 30, it looks like he's got an Oregon first down. I tell you, he ran the ball last week more than his running backs. 12 carries, 68 yards. That time, he just wasn't going to be denied. He was carrying three guys with him for the first. You got to think those offensive linemen kept pushing the pile and kept pushing the pile. I have to wonder if those offensive linemen weren't pushing their own quarterback. Mike Bellotti burns his first time out here. 215. Clements is 215 pounds. That's a heck of an effort right there. You could be kicking your way to $1,000. So 49 $1, seconds $1, left sure until half. And uh, area, Mike Bellotti taking a strike, perhaps, as uh, he's got first down after his quarterback drove the pile across uh, Terry Gannon back with Terry Bowden and Tim Brandt. you got to be careful here, though. I, I know you want to get a strike before the half, but, uh, again, Stand up, coach. you don't want <laughs> Neil, Neil. You don't, you don't, you don't want it to go the other way, as you said. That's exactly right. You can't make a mistake here. And of course, they were in the red zone before, and they made that mistake. You've got a great effort by Clemens here. Now you want to capitalize it. You've got to get at least three points out of this. You, you might take one deep shot. One deep shot. If you get it, go for it. If not, let's get the clock uh, run out and get 10 points down. Well, Kellen Clemens is uh, going to lead his troops back out. He talked to us uh, yesterday about what a thrill it would be to step on this field to play a game. Hey, hey, Timmy, you know, I've coached on those sidelines next to six foot five guys. Five foot nine guy like you guys does not bother me at all. I'm over six, bro. Oh, get out of five, nine and a half. <laughs> I'm towering over the both of you. Get a little attitude here. <laughs> Sooner showing blitz again. Here they come. Clemens gets it off. No one out there, though. The closest man was Garen Strong. Still got 45 seconds left. You got plenty of time. Well, what's happening now is you're going to have to look at possibly not running the clock out and having to face punt rush and punt return by maybe the greatest punt returner of all time, right, Antonio yeah. Perkins. All right, well, let's talk about this, Coach. You got 45 seconds left. You've got two timeouts left. You can move the chains and stop the clock. What are you, what are you trying to do here? But don't answer him right away now. You know, I mean, it takes some time to think. <laughs> now, I, would, I would run the clock. I know you probably thought he's going to pass downfield. I would run the clock out right there. Clements with a move outside, cuts back now, ducks his head out at the 37. Fortunate to get out of there. They oh, burned the timeout here. Yeah, they got to take it here. Timeout. Oregon, second timeout. Lance Mitchell has blitzed every time throughout this series. He's been coming after Clements. I mentioned it a moment ago, uh, we talked to uh, the junior from Burns, Oregon, about playing on the road in such a storied place as Memorial Stadium. And uh, here's what he said. The first thing that I felt was how close the stands are to the field. I mean, they are right on top. I thought they were close at, in Austin. Uh, they are right on top of you right here. Um, but there's, there's an atmosphere at, at a storied program like this. And you can feel it when you walk down the ramp and, and step onto the turf. It's... It's an honor to be here, but it's also, you know, an opportunity. 
I was talking about yesterday that the walkthrough it's a little different when you actually have 82,000 in the stadium too. It's so steep the stands go straight up. I think that's what you see also this uh, this upper level goes straight up and it feels like it's up in the clouds and that's a little different in Nelson Stadium. I'll tell you what he's just an intelligent young yeah, lad. He he? I mean you sit down and you talk with him. He's so impressive the way he speaks. He's so mature the way he handles himself. But he's up against it here. He's got third down. He's got to get a first. He's got 36 seconds. So he's got to move the ball downfield. And I think now almost you have to pass it now because they'll call timeout. So you, you've got to try to get a first down now because you left so much time on the clock. Third and four for the Ducks. Swings it out to his back. Kenny Washington fighting his way. Not going to get there, though. Tripped up at the 40. Shy of the first down by Eric Bassey. And now the Sooners will call the timeout, Coach. Yeah, and you had to wonder, do you go for the block uh, or do you set up the return? I think with Perkins, you don't have to set the return. You go block it, he'll make the play anyway. He's gonna, he makes the punt return whether you set up a block or not. He's only had a chance to try to return one, and they swarmed under him. It was a, a line drive short punt that he ran up the field and defended right in his face. So that's been it. Monday night, showdown between two of the most potent offenses in the NFL, Culpepper Moss and the Vikings, head to Philly to take on the Cab, Owens, and the Eagles. Should be a shootout there. Monday night football at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. The Vikes and the Eagles. How about T.O.'s uh, debut in Philadelphia? Three touchdown catches. Not a bad job, I'll tell you. That guy, as long as you don't have the off-the-field problems or the personality, there's nobody in the NFL that can make the plays that he does. Randy Moss, of course. The Vikings, Terrell Owens, uh, looking across the sidelines at each other. Uh, not on the field at the same time, of course, but it, uh, it should be a great matchup of offenses. Now, if you were ever going to punt the ball out of bounds with 22 seconds left, you're going to punt the ball out of bounds if you got any sense at all because it'll leave less than 20 seconds left uh, and it's got they've got to go a long way so whatever you do do not punt the ball to no. Antonio Perkins. The punting team was not on the field and so here they go and Oklahoma now this is what they're trying to do they got to take a time out got to take a time out now yep. they've got none left excellent excellent call now, so Mike they had Bilotti, to take a timeout. They had too many guys on the team. You're right. Now it's, it's nothing with 21 seconds left. Now last year your son played for UCLA, and I think they had an experience with Antonio Perkins about punting to, punt to them. Well, he's a safe. He was a safety for UCLA, and and they held him defensively just like Oregon's been doing. But they gave up some big plays. Now here's the first one. This is Perkins against UCLA, and they're saying, "Oh wait a minute. You know what kind of return is this? The second one they didn't even have a punt return on, and they, and he just took it." down the side of three in one Coach, game it turned the whole thing why were they punt to that him? guy are you kidding me why are they punt to him <laughs> everybody in the world saying don't punt to that guy and you had to bring that up, his well, kid on the UCLA team, and you got to bring that up. You know, every, he's listening. Every coach has gone through that. Carl he's Durrell, listening. You just broke his Carl heart. Carl Durrell has been through that. We all have. You'll never do it again. But you don't face many people like Antonio Perkins, I promise you. Guys, you got to credit Mike Bellotti here for, for this Excellent last move. move. Kevin, he didn't mean to hurt your feelings, son. <laughs> yes, he did. You don't know him, Kevin. Yes, he Kevin did. Kevin wasn't covering, was he? <laughs> he was yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops, I did it again. So Oklahoma had to burn a timeout to get the right personnel on the field. I tell you, they're still having problems getting personnel in and out. Yeah. You know what they're worried about here? They're worried about the fake punt. Well, something crazy, yeah. exactly. It's his fourth and a half a yard. Well, there's look no, at this. There look is at this. no punter. And it's Clements who will bring the team up. He's under center on fourth and one. Yeah, they're just going to wait and then go off. Play clock at nine. Doesn't matter counting. Play clock doesn't matter really if they have to get the play. Might not even try to get this one off, and they do try it, but they're gonna blow it dead. So delay of game, all it's gonna cost them is five, and, and they're still gonna punt. Now if you want to irritate a, a, a sooner fan. 
possible fourth down. See, now don't worry about irritating fans. He's already gotten the clock down exactly. to, to 22 seconds. He's got them running on and off the field. He's got them looking for all kinds of crazy things. Yeah, but guys, what a stage this would be if they actually now punt it to Perkins and he's able to return it. <laughs> if they punt it to him now, shame on him. Kick it out of bounds. David Dittman. Let's see if I'm Bellotti down there. I'm yelling one more time. Kick it out of bounds. Well, they got Too about, many guys they got, on the field. They got about 20 crimson and cream jerseys on the field right now. They punted away from Perkins and going to roll dead inside the 20 at the 18. But clock stops with 13 seconds, Terry. But Oklahoma now with too many guys on the field. That's an automatic yep. first down. It is. Participation, automatic first down. And it's going to be a um, the substitution signal there. Finish of the half. And if you're... Um, Oregon you, you can even take the Hail Mary into the end zone if you want to uh. but think about this from this aspect how one player can entirely change the game uh, Antonio Perkins dictated that whole series of events receiving team the penalty is refused and it's first down they go ahead and get themselves out of the half. That's all they want to do right now. Get themselves. But that's out what of the that's half. all Bellotti wanted yes. to do. You're right, and that is a great time. So you're right. It could have been anybody back there. He did a marvelous job of getting out of the half. But would the penalty have given him a first down? If I was, would it have been an automatic first no. down? It no. would not have been. It was more than it was more than ten. It would have been had they not had a delay. Yeah. Because I would like to have taken one more shot there. It would not have cost you anything. And who knows what happens. Boy, Mike Bellotti's working today. I mean, he's working hard. Going to take a knee here on what will be the final play of the first half. The final seconds going off the clock here in Oklahoma with the 10 nothing lead at the half. But Mike Bellotti, after what happened last week, remember they were down 20 to nothing to Indiana at home in the opener. And he's got to feel encouraged about how they've hung in and played here on the road in Norman. If you're Oklahoma though and Bob Stoops, you still have the 10 point lead. Going to send it down to Sam Ryan right now. All right, thanks a lot, Terry and Coach Bellotti. Midway through the second quarter, a tremendous opportunity. Late flag, intentional grounding. Your thoughts on what transpired there? Well, it wasn't even a late flag. There was no flag at all for the entire play. That was called by their sideline over there, unfortunately. But we've got to not shot ourselves on the foot. We're playing great defense. Uh, we've got to make some downs offensively, keep our defense off the field, and take advantage. Twice we're in field position to kick a field goal or go for a score, and then took ourselves out of it with our own mistakes. So, again, I'm proud of the way the kids are playing, but we got to convert. Still very much in this one. The punt team kept coming in and out. What was going on there? Well, we're just playing with them a little bit. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're using the rules. We didn't want them to try to block it. Uh, we, are, we should have probably got the first down and kept going, but uh, it's just, you know, trying to keep them off guard. All right, playing with their heads. Thanks a lot, Coach. Yeah, a little chess game, and we talked about it. That's Brilliant. exactly what he was Brilliant. trying to do. Brilliant. And, and he was fast to say it was Coach Stoops that made that call on the penalty. 10 0 Sooners at the half. ABC Sports presentation of college football returning after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Trophy winner who again has directed the offense for Oklahoma, Jason White. 11 out of 15 in the first half, but as usual, his favorite target, Mark Clayton, one of the all time best here in Norman. Sooners up 10-0 here at the half over Oregon as the Pac-10 is in town to take on the Big 12. Hi again. Welcome back. Terry Gannon along with Terry Bowden and Tim Brandt. Play a little Bowden ball right now and uh, tell me why Oregon is still in this thing. Bowden ball says that if Oregon's going to have a chance to win this game, they can't give up the big play. Adrian Peterson right here scrambles for 20, 32 yards. The only play Oregon, uh, Oklahoma has over 25 they haven't given up the big plays no and o uh, oklahoma has played very well defensively but 
you know, Oregon has hurt itself. Oregon got down to the 23-yard line, should have come away with points. Two big penalties. They hurt themselves, took themselves out of field goal range. Then again, they crossed midfield, had a good drive going, and they turned it over with a fumble. So Oregon hurt itself. you, you got to give the credit to the defense a little bit, but, yeah, Oregon's killing itself. But Oregon will receive here in the second half, working against uh, stingy Oklahoma defense. Uh, you can't fall uh, any more behind here and expect to come back against this defense. Yeah, no, no matter how many uh, big plays they hold Oklahoma from having, they don't seem to have the chance to score. they got to score points if they're going to have a chance, too. Well, Mike Bellotti deferred after winning the toss in the first half. So Washington is back deep along with Ryan Shaw, and they're going to keep it right there, eight yards deep. No chance to bring this one back to Carlo hasn't given them a chance all day long. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. We'll show you what we were talking about at halftime. And as you look at the uh, the statistics, I mean, you can look at this. This is all well and good, but see these penalties right here? Four for Oregon, and two of them took them out of range. The three for Oklahoma didn't really hurt them that much. Then you look over here, you see the time of possession, and of course it's been dominated because of this. They're dominating in passing yards, total yards. Pretty good first half for Oklahoma. Oregon now has to correct its own mistakes. Yeah, but those those numbers are, are good in relative to Oregon's numbers. They're not really good compared to what Oklahoma usually does. 54 yards of rushing for Oklahoma is not a great to first half. Cooper's microphone's not working, but uh, speak up, lad. <laughs> legal procedure <laughs> against the kicking team, and the, the flag was back at the 35, so they're going to do this again. Am I allowed to talk over him if his mic's not working? <laughs> So I'm just curious. I don't know. Timmy why, is. Should, why should the official be any different than Terry and me? <laughs> if he's not going to take his opportunity to tell everybody what's happening. you, you got to learn how to flip the switch. Yeah. Learning a little bit. Still a rookie. Mike test. Mike test. Mike test. Mike test. On, Check one, two. Rookie. All right, fellas. Tee it high. Let it fly. Let's get this thing going. I think the two coaches were the MVP of the first half. Both did an outstanding job. Bilotti, right there at the end with his clock management, and Stoops calling the uh, intentional grounding. Hey, how about Bilotti all coming off the field at halftime to Sam? I was just playing with him a little bit. <laughs> 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 you got to love it. Yeah, Bob Stoops with the with the call on the intentional grounding saying you could you could read his lips saying he was in the pocket and he threw it away and they threw the flag after he argued. You know, one thing I think that has really been shown here today, the board check gets suspended, he gets kicked off the team for the year because of his altercations, and then all of a sudden the defense is playing as well as it's ever played. So well, it answers the question we had earlier. Would that have an effect? Would they lose focus? Absolutely not. Not on defense anyway. They have just well, that's where he is, suffocated. Though. I know. And, uh, it didn't hurt him at all on defense if it was going to hurt him somewhere. Kenny Washington may bring this one back. He is two yards deep coming out. Reversing field. He's got some room to the near sideline. And across the 40 to the 43. And it was the, the kicker, Trey DiCarlo, who made the hit. First opportunity he's had to return one today. He took the opening kickoff last week. He took it 100 yards only to have it called back. Here he has a great return. Gives Oregon terrific field position right out of the gate. First team Pac-10 kick returner last year. But DiCarlo gets a ton of credit. If he doesn't turn him back in, watch DiCarlo, the kicker, at the end of this play. Well, they overran the coverage. Exactly. Then he cuts back, and now DiCarlo's got to be the safety valve. If he doesn't cut him back, this thing goes the distance. And guys, again, go back to the coaches. You don't know this, but it's not just instincts. You know Mike Bellotti has talked about the quickness of the defense and overrunning the cover. First and 10. Straight ahead, a big hole for Terrence Whitehead. And he's out to the 47, maybe the 48. Terrence Whitehead. The junior from Crenshaw High School in L.A. Good gain on first down for the Ducks. And the numbers on Whitehead. Less than three yards a carry. Brings up second and three from the 48. So second and three. Tim Day, the tight end, comes to the near side. Offset the backs. Rosario is back there. And here's Whitehead again. Hit hard, but he's got the first down for Oregon inside Hitting Oklahoma right territory here. at the 47. Hit hard is exactly right. And I'm telling you, there's some hard hitting going on everywhere. Let's take you back to the kickoff. Watch Garon Allen get nailed. Bam. Whew. Hello. 
Now watch. He tries to get up. Aaron Allen first says, where am I? All right, I'm getting back into play. Boom! <laughs> Oregon's coming out, and you better have your head on a swivel playing the Ducks here early in the second half. It took them a while to get up the first time, too. <laughs> you want to play college football? Take a look at that. Hello. First and ten Ducks. The 47 of Oklahoma. Rosario in motion. Clements on a roll, going to throw back to the other side of the field. Got a man out there. It's Williams, but he overthrows him. Demetrius Williams had a step. That's a wake-up call, though. Clemens has a rifle for an arm, and now Oklahoma knows that he's got the ability to go that deep. Eric Bassey, I think, held him up just long enough, knocked him off balance, so when he passed him, he wasn't at the same speed as when he took off, and so that's what forced Clemens to overthrow the ball. You'll see that right here. Watch the cornerback in the top of the field. He'll get just enough contact right there to slow him down just a tad. And that's the difference in the ball right there. The biggest play, as you mentioned, for Oklahoma was Peterson's run of 32 yards in the first half. The biggest play for Oregon was the pass interference call, which they came 15 <laughs> yards. Oh, they had tough running. Terry, they're picking up five yards a clip here running the football. Well, this is uh, four seniors, back, four starters back from last year uh, on this Oregon team, you know, led by uh, Adam Snyder and Nick Stites. Uh, these are a, a strong offensive line, and they're big kids. I think the West Coast and the Pac-10, you see big, big offensive line. Sometimes uh, those in the East and the Midwest uh, think this is the only place we've got big, tough football players, but I assure you. They know how to play. A little shakeup in the line this week the West as, Coast. as well. Ian Reynoso getting a start. Mike DeLaGrange started last week. Third and six for the Ducks. Maxwell in motion. Going to blow it dead. Flag on the play back in the secondary. Prior to the snap, a delay of game by the offense. Oh. Penalty is five yards and it's third down. That's going to drive them crazy, and it's going to drive that man right there, Mike Blotty, crazy. They hurt themselves in the first half when they had something going, and they're doing it here again. Uh, but you had a manageable third and six and a half, third and seven. Right. You got a third and 12, and you had a good drive going into the other uh, team's side of the field. It's a drive killer. Yes. Now Anytime. you got to come up with a big play. Anytime we saw this situation in the first half, Oklahoma came with the blitz. Third and a long 11. They're, they're bringing the blitz again. Here come the Sooners. Clements under pressure, steps up, throws over the middle, incomplete. A diving attempt by Maxwell. That's one he should have had now. Ke Kellen Clements made the perfect, uh, perfect scramble, perfect throw. That's the one Maxwell's got to make right there. There it is, right there, wide open. Oh. Dig right across the middle, and you've got to make the play. Comes off his shoulder pads, chest plate. Well, they blitzed, they blitzed uh, six people that time, and if you don't get to the quarterback, that's almost the rush fault more than the, the, the cornerback's fault. Antonio Perkins back at his own 10. Going to get a chance. Fair catch. And the 38 yard punt. I'm not sure I'd stand there and talk to him. You don't want to talk trash to Antonio. <laughs> You've stopped him to this point. Exactly. Be <laughs> thankful. Don't rile him up. For a special performance, Hard hitting game here in Norman. Ouch. Still 10 nothing sooner. We welcome you back to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. 12-20 left here in the third in Norman. And the Sooners up 10-0. Terry Gannon, Terry Bowden, Tim Brandt, and Sam Ryan. Now, Oregon has hung in there. Moved the football here, but uh, forced to punt. And the fair catch, a little surprising maybe, that Perkins uh, with a fair catch on the 10. I, know, I, was, I was very surprised. He had, he had a chance to make something happen. He had no chance before that. First chance, didn't take it. Adrian Peterson in at tailback, going to get a chance here. Breaks through the line, leaps over another one, and out to the 18. Let's go to New York and John. Terry, this Verizon Wireless update is for you and specifically you because your Wolfpack against the Ohio State Buckeyes, T.A. McClendon from 11 yards out for the touchdown. NC State on the board for the first time. Not like one of your sweet jumpers, but at 16-7, they trail the Buckeyes. Terry. Some love all over the place oh, here. Oh, my goodness. John. See, now he's beating up my Maryland Terrapins, but John's giving you props. Hey, McClendon's got that look on a rainy day in Raleigh. 
hard hitting continues right at the line of scrimmage. Robbie Valenzuela teaching the freshmen all about college football. Sooners have had very little success going between the tackles, but when they get on the edge, they pick up some gainers. Watch how they close this down. They try to slant. They pull the tackle. They bring it over. They put him in front. It doesn't help. They're just there filling. Valenzuela just kind of jumps up in the hole and makes the pop. You think of Oregon. You think of quarterbacks, Sammy Parker. Hey, they had two defensive tackles go early in the second round of the NFL last year, and they're even better on the front this year. Third and three. Oklahoma has been terrific for much of the day and season so far on third down. Quick strike. There's the man. Clayton, who is just crushed at the 27, he holds on for the first down, his fifth catch of the game. Anytime they're in a tight fit situation, Terry, they look for number nine, Mark Clayton. They just know he can clear. They know he's going to separate. He's got that ability to separate, not a big guy. Then he takes a pretty good punch here by J.D. Nelson, and you know who got shaken up? J.D. Nelson. He's got hands. Mark Clayton's got hands. When he gets, he gets his number called, he makes the catch. You won't see him drop very many. That's why they got a first and 10. Now the all-time leader in receptions, passing Griffin here in this game. Quinn didn't have a bad game last week in the NFL. White going up top. Good coverage that time. Interference. Flag on the play. Interference. Coverage a little too good. It was Sam Hughes. And he got physical. You watch the end of this. Sam Hughes throws his right arm and, and throws a bar up on him to hold him back. Here you are at the top of your screen. Now he'll turn and run. This is good coverage to this point. Now he's running. You got to look back, but watch his right arm. See his right arm over there? Just holding him back. You know, and he didn't have to do that. The quarterback had made the decision that it was covered. I think he overthrew it. I'm not sure but the ball was catchable. I, I agree. Don't I agree. Which, it was really. which obviously it has to be catchable, but. Pass interference on the defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. See, if I'm Bilotti, first down. If I'm Mike Bilotti now, I'm questioning that and saying, wait a minute. Yeah, he may have interfered with him. The ball wasn't catchable if he wasn't with him. It looked like both had given up on him. Let's see if the ball lands out of bounds. Is it in bounds? Huh. Can't, can't see it from that angle. Big play keeps the drive going. This thing started on the 10-yard line. Orlando, I mean, Oregon had a great first series. Backed them up on the 10. First down at the 43. And don't see that very often. No, not out of Mark Clayton. No, you know. Exactly. Prior to the snap, a false start by number nine of the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Sooners coming off a game last week where many of these names were, were not out there in the second half. So the defense was from, I'll go back to this interference. See his call. right arm though, Terry? Yeah, there's no question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think you have to call it. I think you have to call it. His arm was on him, and you don't know whether he would have gotten there or not. That play has to go in favor of the wide receiver. You want Jones back in the game, bouncing out across the 40, close to the 45. Actually, it's Peterson who is in there. But this crowd looking seemingly uh, looking for something to cheer about right well, now. They, they've gone quiet. But every time Peterson runs it, they cheer like crazy. Yeah. He is the favorite sooner right now. I mean, they are so excited about him. He's a true freshman. Everybody knows the number one player in the nation last year. Ran for 32 touchdowns. This year, he's got 41 carries, 235 yards with the Sooners. So every time he touches the ball, look at this. He's picking up five and a half yards a carry. And most of that yardage is after somebody grabs him because you can't bring him down with an arm tackle. White on the roll, swinging it out across midfield to the 45. J.D. Runnels, the fullback out of the backfield. That is the perfect call for that defense. The defense is aggressive. It's coming hard. And so what does he do? Play action. He runs the waggle. Goes away, lets the defense run themselves out, bring the fullback back under, and there he is wide open in the flats. And, Coach, maybe a play that wasn't in the playbook last year, or at least it was modified, because now you've got a Jason White who's much more mobile. He had no bootlegs or nakeds like that where you fake the play action, roll the opposite way. That's one they had no chance of seeing. Remember, uh, Oregon wants to look at Kansas State and LSU from last year. They never saw these plays. Oregon needs a turnover. They have to have something to happen. There's Peterson. Look at the freshman. Finally brought down at the 40 by Demetrius Spates. Backup 
Strong safety from Oceanside, California. And what I was talking about, Oregon had to go back to last year and look at Kansas State, who ran two-back offense. LSU ran two-back offense. But back then, your quarterback uh, was uh, limpy. He was gimpy. He couldn't run. And Jason White had no nickets. And so that's not part of the offense that they studied. This kid is special. Oh, no, he is. Isn't he? And, and, you know, I, I said they're obsessed with him. They're obsessed with one question. When does Peterson start? And, and coach is quick to come back. Coach Stoops says, hey, wait a minute. Kawan Jones has 1,716 yards and 30 touchdowns during his career here at OU. You do not take him out of a ball game. No, I, I mean. By the way, guys, Wes Sims, the player who is down right now, left tackle, the senior from Weatherford, Oklahoma. But you're right. It, and don't it really take him doesn't, out of the it, line. it doesn't I mean. matter. I, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if Peterson starts or not. He's getting as many carries or more, or more. than Kiwan right. Jones right Well, now. it does matter, though. Because it it may want, matter if you take Jones the guy, out. The guy that's carried the load right. and, has, and has worked and has given his career to it, you. And, it matters in that way. Right. Right. Yes. But, but you're right, Terry, as far as the reps. He's getting, he's getting the same amount of carries. Folks, so many people don't understand when you build a program and you build it where people work hard to become seniors and become leaders, you your coaches well. must respect those kids because those younger ones see what they do. You better let them start even if you come bring them off because that's how you build the continuity of a great program year after year after year. Kiwan Jones learned from Quentin Griffith who is now starring in the NFL. And now Jones the one teaching the youngster Peterson who gets another try. The far side again with the vertical and run out of bounds, but not before he's got a first down. His athletic ability with his size at 6'2", 210, is almost freakish. You get him out on the corner like that, and then you got a guy that big that can just leap and hurdle and cut and twist. Just watch his feet. He's got the edge. Boom. Jumps over one. Special. Anytime you've got the speed to bounce out like that and hurdle, and hurdle people. Ryan Kelly, I'm saying, where did he go? <laughs> Even you can't coach that coach. And, I, you're, a coach. Great, and you're a great one. Great I, coach, I know. I think he could. I don't know. Peterson that. with 71 yards after gaining over 100 in each of the first two games. White going up top. Got a man wide open. Will Peoples touchdown sooner. Turn out the lights. The party's over. All that is set up by that great running attack, folks. We talk about Adrian Peterson, Adrian Peterson. Hold on. Oh, there, there a is a flag back at the 40. Relight the candles. Party's still alive. <laughs> Turn the lights back on. <laughs> I was going to say, I got a job to do. Don't, don't put those candles out yet. I got a bunch more to say. <laughs> But you know how the running game, we talk about Adrian Peterson. Holding on number 79 of the offense. Penalty is 10 yards. It's still first down. Chris Mesmer. Well, that's when you really hate the fact that they call out your number. When you bring back a, <laughs> a touchdown. touchdown. Left tackle. There he is, 79, right here. Mm -hmm. See the right arm? Got beat on that first move. When you lose that first move, now you got to make up for it. That's when you hold. And remember, it was Wes Sims at the left tackle spot who was injured just a moment ago. That's why the ball back in there. Great point. Line. First time in there. We're not sure how the, how the defender rushes. You haven't seen him a bunch of times. And so you're not used to what his moves. So it's first and 20 now as they bring it back. Quick throw. There's Clayton. Can he get through the first line of defense? Yeah, he's got room. Cutting it back is Clayton all the way inside the 25 to the 24. Anthony Trucks, the outside linebacker from Antioch, California on the stop. You think he's not fun to watch once he makes that catch? He's got that vision. He's got those quick pitter-patter feet. Watch this. Once he makes the catch, all right, right here he looks like a chicken on a June bug. Look at those feet. Boom, boom. Cutting back and forth gives you that quick cut. He is special as well. I mean, they're just loading the talent on the offense all have, over. Have you really ever seen a chicken on a June bug? Wouldn't that be a June bug on a chicken, though? I believe it's the other way around. Uh -huh. But maybe you have. I don't know. Did you look at Clayton well, and the uh, PlayStation 2 college football team. USC, how does you know, that work? You city boys, I got to educate you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on seen, out to the farm. I haven't seen many of either. Here goes Hickson all the way to the end zone. Forget the penalty a moment ago. That's how quickly Oklahoma can strike. 25-yard drive by number 30. Dante Hickson, 25 yards, bringing it home. You'd have to think a little fatigue here for the uh, Oregon defense. Uh, they've done as well as they can. 
gets up in the hole, breaks through the linebackers, arm tackles won't get it against Oklahoma. You got to get in front of them. You got to wrap your arms. You got to grab cloth. Use that arm tackle. It, it won't work. Well, you know, when you're tired, you don't get your body in front of you. It's just Lose arms. Your, Lose your legs. Yeah. You're right. Ready, Carlo. Perfect on the yeah. afternoon. Don't like the chicken on the June bug, huh? No, I, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm still thinking about it. I wasn't really familiar with that phrase, but it works for you. 17 nothing Sooners here at home. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. Pacific Life, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. And AOL for broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. 747 left here in the third. Oklahoma with a scoring drive and up 17 to nothing over the Ducks of Oregon. Nine plays, 90 yards. They scored once, had to bring it back because of the penalty, and man, just like that, got to the end zone again. Well, Adrian Pe Peterson is the guy that sparked it. He got the ball running and the running game going. He bounced it wide. He cut back, made yards. Now you can play action, throw deep ball, mix it all in. It all started when Adrian Peterson started making big plays in the running game. Well, Peterson made the statement, and then Mark Clayton put the exclamation There you go. Him. That's right. I'll go there with you. Josh Heupel talked about Griffin and Peterson and the or, or, uh, Jones and then Peterson the learning experience. How about Heupel and Jason White and what he's made? Well there's so much respect for jo jo Josh Heupel. Heupel and the way he went about leading this team and the leadership that he has. Well that one almost left the, the field of play. Some kind of strong leg. All the way. Yeah. DiCarlo putting it through the end zone. Uh, but Josh Heupel, he's a legend in the state of Oklahoma. And he comes back and, like I said, he has the respect of these younger quarterbacks who, who's respect that he knows how to lead a team to a championship. And to have a guy who just did it a few years yeah. ago, it wasn't 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you know what it's like to play right now for these quarterbacks, learning from Josh Heupel, 99, 2000, uh, some big numbers. And I don't know if you agree, but I see Jason White, because of his legs and because of the arm doesn't look like it's a, a killer, I see him more, more like Josh Heupel uh -huh. than maybe a, a first-round NFL draft pick. But a winner. Winner, that's right. First down, and Dante Rosario taking it as soon as he turned around. His third catch of the afternoon, but Antonio Perkins upended it. You know, and here's where this defense, you see him give up a completion but at the same time Clemens now has 12 completions but his longest is for 13 yards so the defense keeping everything short you know and here they come up the cornerback makes a nice play and again they keep it within reason halfway through the third quarter 100 yards they just passed for 101 yards of offense that's 12 of 18 but he only has 59 yards in the air gonna keep it on the ground this time Whitehead bouncing outside and he's got a first down for the Ducks Dante Nicholson ran him out there. ABC Tuesday, it's the big one-hour season premiere of My Wife and Kids, where they go to Vegas for a supersized, star-studded dream vacation. What happens on My Wife and Kids stays on My Wife and Kids. One-hour season premiere, Tuesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. So out at the 36, Kellen Clemens, the junior from Burns, Oregon, who grew up on a ranch, 170 head of cattle and no television. He knows what a chicken on a June bug looks like. I'll have to ask him about that one. Hand it off to Whitehead. Falls ahead up to the 39, tripped up by Lance Mitchell. You know, we talked about Oregon not giving up any big plays. How about Oklahoma's defense? Would you say 13 yards was the longest pass they've thrown all day? And there may have been one run longer than that, but not many. No. Nope. So that's what they're so good at. They don't give up the big play because of their speed and the team defense that they play. You know, this is an Oregon team that lost to Indiana last week. Everybody thought Oklahoma was going to come in here and just blow them out like they normally do and win by 50. Oregon's played quite well. They've hurt themselves at times, but they get a score here, fellas. They're still within reach, but they've got to do something right now. Clements under pressure, dumps it off over the middle. 
Bouncing outside is the tailback, Kenny Washington. A good gain again. They'll move the chains, got I do it. believe. Got the first. How about the way he used the umpire? Umpire's part of the field. He got him, used him as a blocker. And watch how he goes to his third receiver. He's got two receivers outside to the right on your ski. Looks, looks right, looks right, looks right. Then comes back to the back coming Look at underneath. This. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Use that guy. Use him as a blocker. He's part of the field. Last week, with all the turnovers, Kellen Clemens, they talked, the coaches talked this week about him having happy feet and the footwork. When he got out of the pocket, he kind of rushed everything. Today, he's been terrific making things happen when it appears nothing's there. The draw, Washington, no room to run. Larry Burdine made sure he didn't go anywhere. They're going to stop. So the guy who reads Danielle Steele novels, watches figure skating, can move when he gets beyond the line. Well, he is a big guy that can move. It was Perkins that made the Initial. made the whole deal work. Yeah, he made a stop, stutter, step, and allowed the pursuit to get to him. Verdine does get there in a hurry, though. 6'5", 254. Loss of three, so it's second and 13. Four receivers set. Terrence Whitehead, the lone setback. To Whitehead spins away, knifes through the hole and still up. Close to another first down for the Ducks. He may have it at the 43. They spread wide receivers out to both sides to keep the box down to six people. They took everybody out of the box so the defense could not outnumber them. They got a helmet on everybody. Then Whitehead makes a nice spin move. Uh -huh and made something happen when nothing was there. But again, this is great coaching. I mean, spread them sideline to sideline, and you create space. You do that, and it allows blockers to get a hat on everybody. So every red shirt has a white jersey in front of it until he gets into the secondary. Gain of 13 on the play. Whitehead now getting a rest with 48 yards on the afternoon. First and 10 at the 43. Quick throw out to the flat. Garrett Strong bounces out. Not much going on there at all. Eric Bassey, good coverage. Bounced him out of bounds. These cornerbacks rarely one. miss a tackle. There he didn't quite lock up, but bounced him out of bounds. No extra yardage on like an outside screen. The old slip screen outside did not get the extra yardage. Guard brings up second and nine from the 42. Going into the game, the Oregon coaches talk, and we really thought that we'd be able to utilize the tight end, Tim Day, quite a bit, but it hasn't been the case. They've, they've tried to. They've tried to get to him. I've watched the quarterback, and I've watched his route. They've covered him very well. Got a couple of catches. That's it. He's changing the play, boys. Play clock under five. Runs the option to the near side. The pitch is out. Washington cuts back inside the 30 to the 29. They'll move the chains again for the Ducks. And now the sustained drive here in the second half. What a great audible. Great he saw audible. him cheating to the field side or the short side, the sideline side. He went wide side, ran the option, and broke him down defensively. Hey, and don't tell me Oklahoma has seen this team run the option. Pitch man did not, did not slide out and cover the pitch. Oregon has not shown the option. I promise you. Look at this. They Oklahoma put, couldn't prepare. They for put 49 Jonathan Jackson on an island. He had to commit to the quarterback or the pitch man. As soon as he put that first step to the quarterback, you pitch. Play, you played nine technique in Maryland, though. You saw a lot of option. That's not an easy thing to do. Oh, well, I know. Gain of 12 just inside the 30-yard line. First and 10. Almost a mix-up on the play, but he's going to go up top. Dante Rosario. Touchdown, that. Oregon. You know, they talked about sliding that full back out and using him sliding out of the backfield. 30 yards to the end zone. Rosario, the sophomore from Dayton, Oregon. Last week, they got behind and could not throw their fullback, and Mike Blotty said this fullback has a chance to redefine the position at Oregon. Blocker, runner, and catcher. What a nice play. They used their tight end right there to use a skinny post. Sent the running back behind him. Here comes Rosario. The ball was perfectly thrown. Put nice air under it. Really did. Jared Siegel on for the extra point. His first opportunity this afternoon. Just tied the all-time scoring record. Impressive drive, folks. The Ducks will not go away. They just keep nibbling at him. How about this? Perfectly thrown. Clear him out with the tight end. Hit the fullback. Here comes Oregon. The Ducks aren't out of this yet. Oklahoma leading 17-7, but the long drive, an impressive one from Kellen Clemens and 
the Oregon Ducks. And as I said, Jared Siegel just tied the all time scoring record for Oregon. Derek Lavelle, 86 to 89, 89 but they both Oregon had 272 points. Jared Siegel. Because the centers, Mark Clayton. So he will kick off to the Sooners. And Mark Clayton back deep. Standing at his own three. Clayton at the nine. Couldn't get outside. Stopped at the 21 by Aaron Gibson. Terry, let's go back and look at the Chrysler passing playbook. And this is a perfect play by the Ducks. The tight end will take this linebacker, Nicholson, with him. This is the back. He'll take Perkins with him. And here comes Rosero. will slide right in here, and he is all alone. Go ahead and run it. You'll see they cleared out this side with the tight end. The back takes Perkins. By the time he looks down, Rosario is wide open, and Perkins can't catch up to him. That play was perfectly executed. Boy, time and again, Mike Bellotti has put his guys in a position to succeed this afternoon. Bob Stoops trying to do the same on offense now. Adrian Peterson, the lone setback, going to get the call on first down. Back he goes the other way. Doesn't have the speed to get outside, though. Tripped up behind the line. Jackie Bates, the freshman from De La Salle High School. How about the strength of Anthony Trucks just to pull him down with one hand and flipped him? Well, you know what's happened? This defense has been able to sit on the bench and rest. Not only was that a great play call for the touchdown, but it was a great offensive drive. Cool. Watch. Here comes 84. Watch this. One hand. That's it. Okay. Whoop. Got a little help from Bates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> he did pull him over somebody yeah. else. I don't care, but Peterson scares you anyway because he breaks so many of those. Loss of two. Duck show and blitz. Here they come. White throws it. But Wilson well covered. And he was covered by Darius Sanders, defensive lineman. It was a zone blitz. Backed him out of there. Well, and the uh, receivers ran hot routes. They ran just stop routes. One ran a outside, ran a five-yard hot route. The slot receiver ran a 10-yard hot route. And the uh, defensive backs are playing a little bit closer now. They're not as much afraid of the speed. They're playing much closer uh, in man coverage. Hey, how much momentum would Oregon have if they could stop Oklahoma now at third and 12? It's a big series for, for Oregon and Oklahoma. Moses in motion comes back. Jason White throwing it out to Jones and it's caught. Up to the 40, a big third down conversion. Brandon Jones, the senior from Texarkana, Texas. How many times, Terry, have you seen great coverage today, but White just threads it in there perfectly where only his guy could get it? That's the second deep one right there. There's been an incredible throw right here, and it's the deep out, too. It's not like he doesn't have a strong arm. Wow. Just second late getting there. And it's the difference right now because it changes the, the momentum of this drive. Would have been a punt to Oregon. Well, the separation was on the outcut, and that made the difference. Gain of 21, first and 10 now at the 40. Dante Hicks broken play. may have gone the wrong way, or White did. It was broken right away. So the sack, Victor Felipe, the sophomore from Salt Lake City. Tackle there by number 56. They didn't stop Oklahoma, but they've got new life. I was right just going to say, can you see the new bounce in their step? They're bouncing around. They're confident. They know they can play with them. Everybody slides down. Here comes the pressure. Broken play. Jason White never really had a chance. I don't know if it was Jason or the, the right. It looks like Jason forgot the play. I think so. I think the blind were yeah, blocking Because everybody direction. went the other yeah. way. Happens even when you're a Heisman winner. Play clock running down. White. Throws it back. Brandon Jones gets by one. Popped at the 40 and dumped at the original line of scrimmage. But the white jerseys are flying around now. That's going to make a difference. Plus, they're getting more aggressive defensively. They're starting to throw some blitzes at white. Well, they throw that barnyard screen. you got to hustle because you've got to run around and fly and beat the blockers. Blockers are out there to make the play, but these guys are flying around the ball. They beat the blockers. Hold it to about a five-yard gain, eight-yard gain. Third and so it's third and ten as they got back to the original line. Willie Roberts, the tight end. Here come the Ducks. Great throw, though, and catch. Travis Wilson, first down in his first catch of the afternoon. But again, White 
right on target. Third and long, two series in a row, third and long. They've got him in a, in a difficult situation. He throws the first down strike. Beat the blitz. He had man coverage. Watch this. Well, it was a, I'm telling you right now, Jason White sees man coverage. He can, he feels like he can beat it every time. And it was a wasted blitz. Wasted blitz. They blitzed from off the line of scrimmage. The safety couldn't have gotten there in time to sack him if nobody would have touched him. Um, Joy's Four. art and drawing, just like you, Coach. <laughs> Does he have an in-seek notebook, though? There goes Peterson to the near sideline. He may be gone. Goodbye. No flags. Peterson is best when he gets some space and gets out on the edge. You can't beat that speed. When you got great speed like that, uh, you can't teach it, you can't cover it. Uh, you got to recruit it. That's just what they did last year with the number one running back recruit in the nation. You got to look at the scheme. Where's the containment? This tackle right there. It starts with a missed tackle. Good downfield blocking by the wide receivers. 40 yards to the house. No chance for a duck to catch him once he broke through. Carlo on for the extra point. So much for the duck momentum. Adrian Peterson, the 40 yard run, 15 carries for 109 yards. He's gone three straight games to start his career over 100 yards. No freshman back has ever gone over 100 yards. First three games of their career. Now, Adrian Peterson has, in terms of Oklahoma history at least. And here, Washington shouldn't have brought this one out. They wrap them up right at the 10. There is a flag down. Darian Williams, the man who made the hit, he had some help from his friends, though. Down at the 15-yard line. Oh. Back him up in the hole. Well, you, you get the touchdown with Rosario. You get on the board. It's 17-7. Your defense is playing well. It's got new life. The two key third down plays just a buried. You, right. you hold them to a third long, they make it. You hold them to the play. Best defense, if not the best defense in the country, Let's go 95 yards. And... Oklahoma knows it's been in a football game, but these are educated football fans out here, and they know this is a critical time to pounce on them and go ahead and put them away. First down, just outside the six. Rosario with another catch. He's got a first down, and. Well, you talk about redefining that position. He has done. He has. And, and Oregon, give them a lot of credit. The Ducks just continue to play hard. They continue to make plays. They aren't quitting and going home. They didn't wilt in the 95-degree heat, as some suspected. They came to Oklahoma. They came with a mission. They want to show they're better than the team that lost to Indiana, and they've played extremely well. They're not stopping. They're not quitting. Rosario's got 10 catches and three touchdowns in the last two games now. First two games of the season. If you're going to run the off formation be successful, you've got to get a tight end and a fullback with catches, or they're going to focus on your tailback and your wide receivers completely. First down at the 18. Washington runs right into a wall. And we go to New York and join John once again. Terry's time for the singular All-America. Player of the week. You can vote for this, and one vote might go for Sonny Cumbie. 447 yards passing and four touchdowns. This one to Jared Hicks, who also had 216 receiving. Text the word player to 64444 or go to ESPN.com keyword singular to vote. Texas Tech, by the way, pretty good score. 75, 70 to 35. Johnny scored 35 points. You figured you're doing well. <laughs> you let the other guy score 70, it's not the story. Second and 12, Clement shovel pass underneath, and there's Whitehead with room initially, and across the 25 to the 26. Utah pass. Utah pass. Bob Stoops on the sideline trying to get the fans up and yelling and screaming because he wants them to hold them this time, get the excitement in there. 
and get them where they hold them here, they can break their backs with one more score. He was complaining about something, though. I don't know if it was a you know a late substitution or what it was. End of the third quarter, new life on material for Oregon, but uh, the Sooners back. We're back after this message and a word from our ABC station. College football on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Memorial Stadium here in Norman, Oklahoma, 24-7. The Sooners with the lead over the Ducks. Terry Gannon, Terry Bowden, Tim Brandt, and Sam Ryan. As we start the fourth quarter, third and two, we're going to call it for the Ducks at the 27. Fighting his way ahead. I think he got it. For the first down, I believe, Kenny Washington. You got to like that formation. They spread him sideline to sideline just to kind of get some space in there. A good little run, too, there. It's going to be close, but I think he got it. Didn't look like quite a little under two yards. Uh, nice little move inside to get the first down and hold on to a little bit of chance of catching up. It's going to, it's going to take a seven point score here to get them. Well, now they're battling the clock. I right. Mean, I mean, I'm saying there's so much time they've got to make. You need a big play. That's one thing we talked about Oregon stopping Oklahoma. Or Oklahoma's not giving up a big play all day. Washington did get the first down, so it's first and 10 at the 29. Clements throws on the run. Demetrius Williams with the catch, run out of bounds, up at the 34-yard line. Clint Ingram, the outside linebacker from Hallsville, Texas, ran him out. And I should say they haven't given him a deep play. They gave up the big play to the fullback down the sideline, but it wasn't the deep ball, the doll that goes 60 yards in one play. A lot of that is by design. Oh, this is a controlled a offense. They're just dinking and dunking them, but now because of necessity with 14.30 to go, you've got to, have you've got to take some shots. Well, you know, the first half, they took a couple of shots. They, they overthrew. They missed them a little bit. You don't have to take many, just a few of them. Uh, but right now, you've got to have something hit. But it's been the way they've attacked it, and, and they've watched the game tapes, and it's exactly what Bowling Green did a couple of weeks ago and had success at least moving the football against the Sooners. Play action. Clemens off balance, throws it out. We'll see if they throw the flag here. That's exactly what he did. And there's the flag. In the first half, and here comes the flag. But again, he was close to getting outside the tackle. And, and I thought maybe it slipped out of his hand there. Now, I don't know. Remy Ayadell had the pressure and forced him almost out of the pocket. First of all, let's see if that's what they're talking about. I don't know. No. <laughs> Pass interference Offensive, yeah. against the offense. But how do you, well, S somebody pushed off. They had to have pushed off, uh, break into the route of some type like that. Guys, how do you call the first intentional grounding and not that one? Maybe he was a little just well, out of the pocket. Well, you remember now, the officials didn't call that first one. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Bob, Stoops Bob, Stoops Bob Stoops called it. And so it's a maybe, good play by Bob. Maybe Bob didn't speak up this time. Pass interference on the offense, number 82. Penalty is 15 yards, and replay second down. But I agree with you. Both times, he was very close to that tackle box. But, but, he, but he, was, he probably was out of the pocket there. Maybe. That was a little bit close, but it was close. Maybe. In any case, he's going to back up this offense again. It's second, and we'll call it 20. Boy, that's not a good position to be in. You can just lay your ears back defensively. Rosario and Whitehead out of the eye now. The crowd gets back into it. Williams the catch at the 20. Nifty move to the outside. And a good game. Up to the 27-yard line. Demetrius Williams, the junior from De La Salle High School. And, of course, the number of players off that great program, the great team, De La Salle out in California. And one, unfortunately, that uh, is not here, Terrence Kelly, who was tragically shot just before arriving on the campus uh, on the of Oregon. There's the TK in honor of him. All-American out of high school. Two days, two days before he's supposed to be in camp. So sad, so tragic. Third and 12. Eight straight completions for Clements until that one. Garen Strong the intended, but 
way too high. Yeah, that one, that one was on Clemens. Kellen's got to, he's got to thread that needle. He's got to put it right there. He's way too high with the pass. Yeah, they brought the blitz. I think he anticipated the, the hit and to throw it too soon. He had an open receiver, but he had hit, he had hit eight in a row before that time, and so he wasn't going to make it nine. So big stop for the Sooners on third down. They run the fake, not going to kick it to Perkins, and they've got an Oregon first down. Run out of bounds across midfield, and that's Keith Allen. They weren't going to punt it to we, the All-American no matter well, what. Not only that, but we were just talking about Mike has had such a conservative game plan because he didn't want to make mistakes, wanted to stay in the game. Now he's got to take some risks. That is a phenomenal play. Well, you know, when you have to face perfect, that's about the third thing they've done out of punt formation. I mean, how sweet is that play? Just let Allen run. First you fake it. You make it look like it's going to go to the right. You have a little reverse to Allen, and he picks up the first. That's a nice-looking play. Trick still up the sleeve of Mike Bellotti. First and 10 from the 47 of Oklahoma. Put that one in your playbook, Coach. Well, you know something? There's, there's two things going on here. When you come into this, and I talked to some Oregon people that didn't say this publicly, but one, you think if you play great, something might happen when but also you don't want to get embarrassed. You don't want these kids, you don't want to lose their confidence coming here and Oklahoma just goes wild and what they're doing right, right now, a play like that can keep this game within the distance so you leave here with a little more confidence than if Oklahoma were to blow you out. I'm going to tell you something. Oregon is playing really, really good, good football and they are going to be extremely dangerous in the Pac-10. <laughs> Cheerleaders have something to cheer about here at Oklahoma 24 7. Sooners 14 7 left in this one. First and 10, Oregon at the 47. They run it with Whitehead. Back to the near side to the 42. Reminder time permitting the thrifty car rental post game report with John Craig and Aaron. Comes your way. Stay tuned for highlights and analysis from today's matchup. A little stiff arm from Aaron. It's not all glamorous out here. He didn't even shave when this game began. <laughs> it's been a long day here in Norman. <laughs> a little bit like Lyle Alzado. Didn't he? he did, you're right. Second down, swinging it out to Whitehead. Good gain and a first down. Terrence Whitehead goes back to what you were saying. They'll take a lot of positives from this game to the Pac-10 schedule. I mean, they played so well. That's why you don't want the score to get out of hand and look ugly, because they have played a super football game, and they're going to have a good season. Hey, fellas, they're, they aren't even thinking about that right now. They're still thinking about winning this oh, football game. Oh, I'm with game. you. Gain of 10 by Whitehead. But either way, they needed to do this after last week and what happened back at Austin. They've played terrifically today, I think. Difficult yards. Clements with time going to the end zone. Got his oh. man, but he overthrew Demetrius Williams. What an opportunity. And Paul Williams was there. Go to New York and John Saunders. Well, Terry, the co defending national champions, LSU, in trouble against Auburn. You see, they have the lead. But Jason Campbell goes 16 yards to Courtney Taylor. They missed the point after, but a penalty on LSU allowed them to kick it again. It was good, so Auburn leads 10 to 9 with less than a minute remaining. Your old school, Terry, and uh, what, what a penalty that is. <laughs> what a penalty, but I'll tell you, Auburn does a great job playing against LSU. That is always the toughest game of the schedule, except for Alabama and Georgia for that Auburn LSU game. Clements runs the option to the near side this time to the 27 yard line. So we've seen him do that a couple of times uh, already in this game. You know talking about LSU I thought they lost that opener at Oklahoma State against Oklahoma and that somehow pulled that out with very little time left. Well the other team missed three extra points but they're breaking a new quarterback. Most any time a team is breaking in the new quarterback like they are that offense is not going to be as good as it was last year. They've scored nine points in the longest. Case in point, NC State against Ohio State today, even though they are at home in Carter for them. Tennessee starting two true freshmen tonight, so around the country, 
New quarterbacks can cause you some headaches. They're on their feet here at Memorial for third and four for the Ducks. Washington got the first. Fights his way Close. near a first down. We'll see. See where yeah. the mark is. I said Oklahoma State and Oregon State against LSU. I thought Oklahoma. he had the first down, first down, but there was a knock him back there. We used to call those knock him backs when the back goes backwards instead of forwards. They called it a knock him back. Knock him back. You know, Makes that's sense. part of the, you know, there's a, there's a Bowden language that you have to learn. Got to learn about those knock him backs. That's right, Dad Gummit. First time out. And shaking my head a few times up here. He didn't today. hit the wad, did he? What's that? He didn't hit the wad. The wad, oh yes, the wad. You got to be able to bounce off the wad. Time out, Oklahoma. Both teams down to two. We'll step away. Come right back. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Everything we touch, we shift, and everything we shift, we try to make better. Olive Garden. When you're here, your family. Aflac, ask about it at work. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. Back here in Norman, better than 82,000 on hand at Memorial Stadium. Fourth down coming up for the Ducks. Not even close to the first down with the mark on that last carry. So it is fourth and two. And at this point in the game, Mike Pilate says, yeah, we got to go for it where we are here. On the 24. Empty backfield. You got to throw it or quarterback draw. One or the other. There's quarterback the quarterback draw. draw. Yeah, that's exactly right. Clements has the first down inside the 20 to the 17. Gain of seven on fourth and two. You know, again, they spread it across. Empty backfield. There's nobody hey. back there except the quarterback. That's the first thing I noticed. When you said empty backfield, I said quarterback draw. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking like a defensive guy. I see empty backfield. You know, the quarterback's going to run and he's going to throw. That's it. Well, the fact that the backfield was empty, everybody had to take off and cover him, so it's a good chance, even if you know it's covered, oh, you can't call. stop good it. Call. Yeah. Good call. Dante Rosario, the fullback, is the lone setback. Remember, they throw to him off. It. He's got five catches already. Goes out to Williams, though, in the flat. Hard hit. Knocked out of bounds just inside the tent. Clint Ingram. Had some help from Perkins. That's the fifth catch of the afternoon for Demetrius Williams. Oregon's been so impressive. Take a look at the Nissan Drive summary. 15 plays, 84 yards, four and a half minutes. Oregon still driving. They score here. Make it 24-14. You still have 11 minutes to go. That's the Nissan Drive summary and the story of the game to this point. Oregon doesn't play but one team, USC, that's close to this Oklahoma team. Second down. Clements with time initially flushed out. Oh. Down he goes at the 18. Couldn't keep its balance. Remy Ayadell. At a Northeast Oklahoma AM. Three sacks. Is he a load or what? 302 pounds. They really like him too. But you know, I, I don't know if you get to get rid of that one. I know you want to make something happen late, but you got a little, you got a short yardage distance. Try to make something happen, but get rid of it. Don't take the sack. Loss of eight on the play. Where's Maxwell? Big guy, six foot four. Look for a mismatch. Third and ten. Let's see what he comes up with. Play action. Clements throws out to Rosario. That's been their man, but well short of the first down. Gets it to the ten. And if he doesn't take the sack, that play right there goes for a first down plus more. I guess that's the point. I'm trying to make, although this late in the game, he's trying to make plays. You still got to get three points along the way somewhere, the way the score differential yeah. is 24 to 7, so you got to make a call. At the same time, you think you're down 24 to 7, you got to think, hey, I'm, I'm down at the 11, I got to go for 7. I think that's why he got sacked. He was really feeling strong about getting 7, but get some points here. I, I, don't, I don't question this. Well, they got to get him eventually, anyway. Yeah. There it's Siegel on for a try from 27 yards, and here's a fake. Siegel's trying to run it. Terry, I don't think it was a fake. I, I think he bobbled his bottle the snap. No, I don't think that was. Uh, now, to come away with no points there is just killing Oregon. It goes back to the first quarter, first half, where they came away for the 23-yard line with no points. Come away here with no points. I think that's a bad snap. Watch the snap. The holder's Clemens. He gets it. He drops it. He bobbles it. Now he's thinking, okay, what do we do with it? Well, there was an opening, and he almost turned this thing loose. 
but Siegel just didn't have the speed uh, to get don't outside. Think so. nope. <laughs> I don't think old Siegel is going to pull he that one off. Those speed. Yep. Ball was snapped inside on the hip. That's a little. That's a tough one to hold on to. You'd like to think uh, Kevin Clemens could hold on to that ball, being a quarterback, but nonetheless, First failed field goal. Sure. So they waste an 84-yard drive and get nothing out of it. Peterson ahead for a couple. Adrian Peterson doing much of the work here, especially in the second half. Haven't seen Kiwan Jones for a while. You know, we talked about that. Kiwan is the number one tailback. Adrian is number two, but we've seen Adrian Peterson a lot more than number one today. And that's how you can do it uh, without making him number one. Just give him four reps. See Dante Hickson as well, who scored a touchdown, but not DJ Wolf, the other freshman from Lawton, Oklahoma, who's part of the mix here for Bob Stoops. It's been a fun football game, though. A lot of big plays. Haven't had the sense that Oregon's been out of this thing at any time. Peterson across the 15 to the 16. Peterson well, they stop him here on third, and they'll get another shot to put some points on the board. Devin Long has been active today. But the clock now becomes such a huge factor down to 943, 42, still ticking. It's so hard to put points on the board of this team. This team. Oklahoma's defense does not give up the big plays, and so now you get the ball so few chances. Well, we said early on the defense has given up only one big drive and one big play in the first two games. They come in here, Oregon had some success, got down in scoring areas, but couldn't convert. Third and four for the Sooners. White out of the gun. To his tight end, could have been picked off. Not a good throw, not a good choice right there. Third and four, two guys right on the receiver. On the receiver. It's going to be intercepted and deflected. Not a good choice there. Don't be afraid to throw it away. Jerry Claiborne used to say there's only a couple things that can happen on a pass play, and two of them are bad. <laughs> That's way back, but throw that one away. That one's seven points the other way. Go ahead and punt the ball. There's a plus, there's a minus, and there nobody wins. All right, now you need the four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't be Aaron offsides. Gibson. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground and don't clip. Aaron Gibson back at his own 47. He's going to get a return. Ferguson, a line drive kick at midfield. Gibson, oh, just crushed <laughs> by Quinn Ingram. Your eyes light up if you're Ingram. 35 yards on the punt, five yard return, and a costly return. Slobber knocker. Yeah, but you, you just don't want him to be hurt. I know. And Oregon takes oh, over the hit. We're glad to report that Aaron Gibson, after taking that shot, is up and is on the sidelines. And they're still working on him, making sure that he knows where he is and how many fingers they're holding up. Head-to-head -head collisions are dangerous. You've got those certified athletic trainers over there making sure there's no concussion. Clemens throws on first down well behind the intended receiver. You know, we, we sit and we joke about it, but I tell you, this is dangerous. If you take another look at this play, this is some kind of hit. Head-to-head, -head, that's what you're very, very right. careful about. Here's Gibson. Now watch Ingram will come, and it is hat-to-hat -hat right here, 44. Bam! Tuck your tail, Sky, your eyes drive, and you want to drive through the chest, but watch. His hat comes up high. They go helmet-to-helmet and the knockout punch, but Gibson's okay. I spoke to the National to Trainers Association. They said they don't want people saying, got his bell rung, dinger. This is serious when we talk about oh, it. Is don't make light of it because the concussion is a very serious thing. Second and 10 for the Ducks. Play action again. Clemens with time, dumps it off. Williams the catch. Not much going on, though. At the who else? 41, guess who? Rue. Rufus Alexander. Alexander. Oh, what a start to the season Rufus Alexander has had. The sophomore from Baton Rouge did not start the first game. It was great Gayron Allen, but last week Alexander getting the start against Houston again this week. And Gibson going to sit down and rest for a while with the, the cooling apparatus on his head. Clements over the middle, dumps it off inside the 30. Maxwell's got it down to the 27. Give a lot of credit to Maxwell for not quitting on the route, 
but all the credit has to go to Clemens, the quarterback, who bought as much time as he possibly could. You know, when you've got those red jerseys flying around, and, and he sits back, watch how he's in the pocket. Looks to the right, now he'll come off him. You see him go over the middle, finally sees him, bought as much time as he could, and delivered the ball perfectly. And how about those big smellies up front now? I didn't see anybody close to it. They double teamed two. I stopped all four rushers on the line of scrimmage. See, now I'm gonna tell you the same thing I always tell Keith Jackson. Yeah, their mamas are watching, don't call them smellies. They're big smellies. He I said big and smelly. Big and smelly. Gave him some credit, at least, for being big. First down. Clements wants to run this. Doesn't want to get a hit like that, but gets to the 23. Lance Mitchell on the hard hit. A reminder, tonight's primetime lineup. Laugh till it hurts with America's funniest home videos at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Then see who's crowned Miss America at 9 Eastern. That's tonight right here on ABC. Hey, hey. 723 and counting here in Norman. And what's turned out to be a gorgeous day. It was 95, 96 early in the day, but the shadows creeping in. Not bad. Oh, we got a fan on us. Oh, that's why it's cool. Whitehead breaks through. Down to the 12. Terrence Whitehead. He's explosive, isn't he? 5'10, 210 pounds, played well all day. One of the captains of the team. Both these teams have so much pride. Oregon still fighting to get in this game, and Oklahoma does not want to give up another score. They've got so much pride on defense, also. Look at him right here, split defenders. And then he's got that extra burst. Gain of 11, and not a bad one two punch for uh, Mike Bellotti with Whitehead and Washington. Brandon Shelby, the man who's on the turf and injured. Shelby is the nickelback. It's been a nice slugfest in the second half. You know, it really has. I think yeah, 14 to 7, Oklahoma's way. But it's been a battle. This Oklahoma team's trying to become the 12th Oklahoma team to win its first 10 games and the third under Bob Stoops. A win today makes them 3-0 with two weeks to prepare for Texas Tech and Texas. Texas Tech, I think, only scored 70 today, so um, that should be a fun game. That's right. <laughs> That's amazing. Give up 35 and beat a team by 45. Good to see Shelby off to the sideline, walking off. Well, now he's hobbling a bit again. You know, we talked uh, to, to Bob Stoops about recruiting a quarterback without ever throwing a pass. They hired Mike Leach, who's now the Texas Tech head coach, when he was at Kentucky throwing to Tim Couch in that That's wide right. open offense. That's what's got uh, Jason White in their offense. Terrence Whitehead with 64 yards on 12 carries in the game. Play action on the roll is Clements. Got a world of time. Oh, Throws smart. it away. Smart play. Yes. Good coverage by the Oklahoma secondary. Carl Pendleton eventually applied some pressure on Kellen Clemens. Dan Coss, backup tight end in the mix. But you look at the top two teams in, in USC, and he mentioned a couple of weeks to prepare. The schedule for USC, the schedule for Oklahoma the rest of the way. I mean, will Oklahoma, and both of them look very good. I'd say California, Notre Dame for USC are big schedule. Texas, obviously, the big, big one for Oklahoma with Nebraska, uh, Missouri, and uh, Kansas State both having all having losses so far. Made a habit out of beating Texas, though, recently has Bob Stoops. Kicking it out. This is Kenny Washington trying to get outside. Gets to the eight. Washington on the carry. Washington, the senior from Brea, California. So he and Terrence Whitehead split time in the backfield. I'm telling you something about Ingram. Ingram is a good guy, but he's got bad intentions. He, he <laughs> flat out hits folks. Well, you know, if you're going to run that option with a passing quarterback, you've got a chick chance to get that passing quarterback hit. That's why very few passing teams run a whole lot of the option. Third and six. Here come the Sooners showing blitz. Over the middle, broken up. Kenny Whitaker, the intended receiver, but Rodney Poole was there to break it up. Nice coverage. Blitz came a little late, did not enough time to sack the quarterback, but he knew he had to get rid of it on time. You'll see right here. Here comes number 10, number 9 in late. Boy, Poole makes a great play. That's a big-time yeah. play. He's got a big tight in there. You hope to get it in his frame and catch it, even though he's covered. But 
big time defensive play. So where Clements wanted it before he he got it. You know, he rose the foot to tell his center how I'm ready, but he, he wanted the ball before yeah, that blitz yeah, got there. game. That's right. 25 yard attempt from Jared Siegelman. Need a good snap. Didn't get one the last time, and this one's blocked. So they bobbled the snap the last time. Don't pick up the first town, and now the Sooners block it. It may have been Rodney Poole. We'll see. You know, Terry mentioned the inside snap on the hip, which is hard to feel. He got it again, but he made the catch, and he put it down. Uh, but this, this thing was knocked down like a fly swatter. I don't know if what the vertical jump is over there, if that was Brandon Poole or No, it had to be low. Oh, watch. Inside, there it is. Now watch the low kick. Oh, my. It had, <laughs> yeah. That's one of those 47 vertical jumps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Maybe 41. Maybe 42. Oh, I tell you what, though, that's illegal this year. You can't jump with it. That's an illegal play. We'll come back and talk there about it. There should have been a flag. But Poole was the man who blocked it. Fellas, I'm telling you right now, Oregon should get another chance at this kick, and I'll show you why. Watch number 44 right here. This is a new rule this year. A player who runs forward and leaps in the air in an attempt to block a field goal or an extra point may not land on an opponent. He did. Should have been a flag. They should have had another kick. Irrespective of the fact that he did not block the kick, he, in fact, caused the infraction. That was Rodney Poole that blocked it. Look at Peterson bouncing off a one to the outside, finally brought down at the 15. Well, Adrian Peterson just uh, showing you why he was all everything in high school. Here comes 44, Ingram. He goes up. The rule says you cannot come down on anybody. He clearly did. That's a refraction. It's a new rule this year. There should have been a flag. There is none. It's a new rule, and the officials should not have missed, this, missed it because his emphasis should be on watching a new rule they just put in this year. Second and five. Do you like the rule? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Inside give straight into the line. Look at the pile move across the 20. Close to a first down is Adrian Peterson. Terry Brand uh, Brandon Poole, who made the block, he jumped vertically straight up in the air, blocked it, came straight down. It still uh, allows someone to make a great play or does not allow a kicker to line drive it. You just can't jump up on top of somebody and use the pile to get you higher. And they addressed that a couple of years ago where you can't use step on a teammate to right. step right. And now you you can't land on an opponent. We talked all day about how impressive Oregon's been on the road here against the number two team in the nation. But guys, it's 24-7. How good does that make Oklahoma as Peterson drives the pile again over the left side? Oklahoma's good. There's no question about it. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Jason White staying in the game late. Here he goes to Moses. That's a touchdown to make it 10 0. Then here comes Dante Hicks and watch this. Explodes through the line. 25 yards made it 17 0. It's 17 7 when Peterson explodes with a 40 yard run. The true freshman takes it in to make it 24 7. But even with that, with 537 to play, 24 7 game, you still have Jason White in the ball game, and that in itself is rare this late. Normally, Oklahoma has a big lead, and he's sitting on the sidelines. And it's a credit to Oregon. They barely hit 100 yards of total offway offense midway through the third period. They now have 313, just about 55 yards less than Oklahoma. Jason White only played one series in the second half last week against Houston. Looking for Travis Wilson. Good coverage. There's contact, and here comes the flag again. Jackie Bates, the freshman, going to get whistled here. Jason White got tagged. They came with a blitz, and just as he released the ball, he got just dumped. You know, 24-7, to 7, and I, I can't see this game getting any closer. I would think it's time to get Jason White out of there. He, he, I don't care if he's mobile or more mobile. He's still got a, a leg that you got to protect. I'm not so sure this is one series too many. Uh, for Jason White. Well, there's no question they came with the backside blitz and just as he released that ball, he put him on his behind. Watch I mean, this. All right, here's the pump fake. The Boom. There's the hit. Penalty is 15 yards and it's a first down. Now, Valenzuela could have made it more difficult and, and hit him harder than he did, yeah. but he just kind of threw him down. Well, let's see if the, the staff leaves him in. I just don't know. Uh, Here comes 99, Valenzuela. Boom, there's the pop. Jason White still in the ball game. 
you get a knee injury right here. You get a season-ending knee injury. Jason White right here with five minutes left, up 24 to seven. Uh, and I think you second guess yourself the rest of the season. Changes your season just a bit. Peterson dancing around, bouncing outside through the grasp of one across midfield. How good is Adrian Peterson going to be in his career here at Oklahoma? Well, he bench presses the world. He's got terrific balance. Doesn't offer his body up to the tackler. And he's quicker than gossip. I mean, the guy just plays. You know, they talked about this is the first year they've had a one-two punch in the backfield since their championship two years. I'm talking about Juwan, jo Juwan Jones and now Adrian Peterson. They've got two different guys, can do it different ways. You can name him. You can call him number two all you want to. Uh, and, but, but I'm going to make sure he's in the game. And if it's not one of those two, then you give it to Dante Hickson, who goes 25 yards for a touchdown. I mean, they're loaded. The DJ Wolf also is another one that they think they can play, but they didn't have that since the uh, national championship team where they had more than one back in the backfield. Run the play clock all the way down. Give it to Peterson. Not a bad idea. He's got a first down for Oklahoma. Late flag, Terry. Might have been face mask. Yeah. You know, talk about Jason White still being in the game. His numbers in the Heisman. There you go. There you go. Even more impressive when you consider that over the last two years, White has been on the, the bench six full quarters because Oklahoma has blown so many people out. Yeah, and, and I think maybe there's some there's a toughness factor is getting your first team to go four quarters, making sure they see four quarters. Little face mask. Inadvertent there. face Inadvertent mask five. on number 28 of the defense. It's a five yard five penalty from the, from the end of the run, and it's enough for a first down. Well, here's the deal with Jason White. First Heisman Trophy winner to return to school with the trophy since BYU's Ty Detmer got it in 1991. Then you look at does he have a shot this year? Well, he doesn't have any pressure. It's probably between he and Leinert the way the formula is because. The quarterback has the advantage. He throws deep. That makes for highlights on Sports Center. Gets plenty of recognition. The team will probably be in the national title hunt. Now all that mixed together, he's got to be the leading candidate again for the Heisman. Peterson busting through. Adrian Peterson might be in the hunt now uh, before the year's out. <laughs> but here's what Jason White must do. His last two games against Kansas State and LSU, I think the crowd felt he's maybe overrated. He didn't throw that well. He couldn't move. I don't think they knew how injured he was. He wasn't mobile. He had a knee problem. He had an ankle problem, a wrist problem. I think what he's got to do this year is convince people that those two games were an anomaly they caused by injury and that he is the outstanding uh, athlete that he, everybody thought he was before those last two games. First down. Sooner. After the gain of 16, first and 10 from the 18 yard line. Why not go back to the freshman? Spin oh. it all the way to the end zone. Here is your next great running back in the United States of America. There is absolutely no question about it. The number one player in the nation in high school last year. Now as a true freshman, he's just making college ball look like it was on the prep level. They don't come around every day. The last time I was in Norman in 1978, I sat there on the bench for West Virginia and watched Billy Sims win a Heisman Trophy. He may be the next best one since old Billy Sims. Well, I said he looks like Marcus Dupree yeah, in the he 80s, does. but I'll tell you, he's better than Marcus Dupree. Sorry, Marcus. <laughs> Seventh carry on the drive alone. And Peterson with the touchdown run. Carlo on for the extra point. And guarantee you this, it won't be Jason White and some of those names on the first team out there, they get it back. No. Folks, he is young, but this is a full-grown man, I guarantee you. Look at the read. Look at the read. Cutting back, spinning, turning. Now getting to the wide side of the field and just running for the end zone. I mean, you talk about the total package here. Look at the quickness of the whole change of direction, power to break the tackle, and then speed to accelerate away from the defenders for the touchdown. He's got it all just as a true freshman. Now just bring him along slowly mentally. That run to me was not as impressive as his 40-yard run for the touchdown because he got through the hole so quickly that first time. Didn't give the defense time to react. He was already in the secondary. Uh, he can do it in a lot of ways. You're right. He can just outrun you or run Look over you numbers. and bounce off. 7.6 yards per run. It came in averaging over five yards a carry for the season. So that is going up. 
A couple of touchdowns. And that's without starting, Terry. He didn't play hardly at, at all in the first quarter. I don't remember taking a snap in the first quarter. Yeah, I think that's that game plan that they use. They've got two outstanding backs and share the reps, and uh, whoever has a hot hand, uh, they go with him. And I don't remember Kiwan Jones being in for a snap in the second half. Well, no. the, I'm not sure I saw him in the second quarter too much. Oh, just a little bit. And you got to feel for that guy. I mean, good grief. What a running back he is. 1,700 yards and 30 touchdowns in his career. And now he sees the freshman doing this behind him. Short kick. Fielded at the 20. Ryan Shaw hit hard at the 20. It's been a hard-hitting game. It really has been a slugfest second half. I mean, an actual slugfest right now. <laughs> Well, this fall on ABC, they survived the crash, but can they survive the unknown? Lost premieres Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. 332 left here in Norman. Some of the crowd starting to file out now. Talk about hitting is what you're talking about. These are the hits of the day. First they come, they slobber knock you, then they give you snap bubbles, then they got the, what'd you call it, the back me up? Knock them back. Knock them back. Surprise, knock them back. And that's just in your face. So what? it's been that kind of afternoon. Which is the worst one officially? What's the worst one? Uh, Probably. Slobber knocker, I would think. The snot bubbles is kind of a, when you're being beaten. So I think the slobber knocker would be the worst. All right, I'm with you. Mouthpiece one way, slobber the other way. Terrence Whitehead on the carry as you look at Peterson. Uh, a little winded. Not much, though, on the sideline. Dennis Dixon, by the way, is in. The freshman quarterback on in relief of Kellen Clements. Here's a look at Bob Stoops now in his sixth year. 57 wins and a national championship. He's done everything right. He embraced the tradition, the former players, the ex-coaches. He's very confident. The players feed off that. He has the highest winning percentage of any OU coach. There's Dixon, the freshman, throwing on the run. A little bit behind his intended receiver, another freshman, Cameron Colvin. And, and you know the, the greatest asset or strength of Bob Stoops, he makes people become the best they can possibly be. Remember when you were young, your mama told you you were going to be special over and over again, and finally you felt you were going to be special? He convinces every one of his kids. How many times did we hear him say, this kid's special, that kid's special? He says it over and over again to him so much. They believe they're special. They play special. And I think that's why you see so many Thorpe Award winners, uh, uh, Butkus Award winners, and Heisman winners. Yeah, I agree. And he's humble. I, I sat there and I said, here you have a higher winning percentage than Bud Wilkinson and Barry Switzer, two of the all-time greats here in Oklahoma. And he says, oh, don't put me in their class. Longevity is what he said. It, 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 I haven't done it for as many years as they did it. Rosario at the 31 after the catch. There's a flag, a late one at the 26-yard line. Clint Ingram on the stop. Seventh catch of the afternoon for Rosario. You know, Bob Stoops' dad, uh, former, his, his dad, uh, Ron, his dad passed away, uh, high school coach Cardinal Mooney. And he had sons, Ron, Bob, Mike, and Mark. And when they were young, he would show his films on the the refrigerator door and they'd all sit around and watch the film when they the were young. Block block by number 24, by number 24 and number 61 of the offense. The, offense. the penalty is declined. Penalty it's fourth down. fourth down. You knew that had a great impact on them in becoming head coach to have a father. They just sat around the kitchen floor watching the high school film on the well, refrigerator. You would door. know. Oh well that's exactly what we did. That's exactly right. And and he, and he lost his father when he was a coach at Cardinal Mooney. His brother's now an assistant as at Cardinal Mooney. Gives a lot of credit to his mom, D, uh, who has raised all those boys, too. Great Mike, head coach at Arizona. Uh, Mark, what a great family. I thought what was incredible is when you talked to him about that coach, he uh, he got teary-eyed. He choked I mean, up. He, yeah, sure did. Guess what, guys? Got a chance. Huh? Perkins, though, flag. surrounded at the 47 with a flag coming in. You're the return guy. You don't want to hear him call that middle return. I mean, sometimes you break it, but you got a better shot. When you get, get behind that wall. Getting hit, yeah, you want you want a little wall in front of you. Hasn't had many opportunities to even try to bring one back today. You know, 31 to 7, but you have to think uh, Mike Blotty is going to bring so many positives to his players out of this game, the way they played. Score is not really indicative of the great game they played coming into here off of a, a loss to, to Indiana. Uh, and, of course, uh, Oklahoma is building and building. Needed a tough Holding game. Number 22 of the return team. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
and it's a first down. Yeah, and I agree with you. Not taking anything away from Indiana, but uh, boy, that was probably the worst game I've seen Oregon play Oregon in play, yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And Oklahoma needs some tougher ball games. You don't need every game to be a blowout. Uh, you need some. To, you need to face some adversity with your starters in the second half. So Oklahoma taking over. With Tommy Grady, not Jason White. As we mentioned, we wouldn't see White back. DJ e. Wolf, the freshman, gets the call on first down. Send it down to Sam Ryan. Yes, but you were talking about what Jason White could accomplish. Which was truly impressive. Only the eighth Heisman Trophy winner to try to repeat. Archie Griffin, the only one to do so for Ohio State. Now, Jason told me he spoke to Archie. They didn't really talk about the Heisman, though, but Archie did give some, him some advice about coming back. He said, make sure you're happy with your decision. And Jason said, you know what? I want to win the Big 12. I want to win the national championship. As far as repeating for the Heisman, he said, no pressure there because I've done it already. I've got other goals now. Well, you know, Sam, it's more than that as well. I, I really firmly believe that Jason White returned to improve his stock with the National Football League. He that wants to prove that he's mobile, Reed. that he's solid, that his knees are, will hold up in the, at the league playing on Sundays. I think that really influenced him coming back. And last year, he never had a chance, forget about playing on Saturdays, never had a chance to practice a full week all sure. season long. Hey, you want to you break my father's heart, though? Do you know what his number one <laughs> choice was out of high school? What school he wanted to go to oh, number one? I know. Florida State. Know. His sister played softball. He wanted to go to Florida State. When Jason White told you that last night, I, your eyes got big as I'm saucers. Thinking, okay, a couple of national championships for Florida State with that guy. Gee, many Christmas. But uh, he's made a good decision. He sure has. And uh, he it means a lot from Tuttle, Oklahoma. To, now, are you really going to tell your dad? What Jason said about he wanted to go to Florida State. Yeah, he did. Didn't, didn't, didn't recruit him. I don't. I mean, Jason, it's Christmas. <laughs> Man, what's, what's, what's wrong with that man? <laughs> Wolf swarmed under as soon as he got the football that time. Three ducks all over him, and uh, thought you were going to say three Reed, ducks Jerry in a row. Benson. No. Yeah. I say who. Who is going to be Oklahoma's biggest competition in the, in the Big 12 this year? We got Nebraska won today but lost to Southern Miss. Kansas State beaten bad by Fresno. Well, you saw Texas Tech is up next. Right. And they put on 70 on the board today. That's followed by the Red River shootout with Texas. And then you got, uh, well, which Missouri. Is, which is always tough no matter what. Today's Chevrolet players of the game, Colin Clemens and Adrian Peterson. The numbers right there for both of them. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. 183 yards for Peterson. 40-yard touchdown run, an 18-yard touchdown run. Jason White certainly could have been chosen as well, but uh, when a freshman does what Peterson did, got to give it to him. And for Clements, at least psychologically, you, know, you walk away from this week's game thinking all right I survived on the road we got to get better we have to do things but it wasn't the Indiana game that's for sure it sure wasn't as a team it wasn't and for him personally wasn't mm -hmm. late in the game they got within six he could have brought them back for a victory he made two foolish interceptions that's not what a returning starter does he felt bad about it he criticized himself uh, and you can see today he's come back you don't see any foolish mistakes uh, by Kellen Clemens I'm gonna tell you something about Clemens I think he's a big-time quarterback oh, I He's got a live arm. He throws the ball well. He sees the field. He's mobile. He's big time. Yeah, I think he's going to see Sundays out there with that arm, that quick release, uh, and the intelligence that he has. Right. Ferguson's punt. Whitehead back. Well, this is a good punt. The 13, and he's staying right there. 49-yard punt, no return. Mark Bradley made the uh, tackle, I believe. There's a great story, Mark Bradley. Uh, coach's kid, walk on from Pine Bluff. Um, I think he scored a touchdown in his first, uh, what, kickoff return, first pass, first pass, and fifth pass reception. We had first, first touchdown, three out of the four things you can do. He had a touchdown each time he touched the ball the very first time at Missouri. His father, a quarterback at a wishbone quarterback at Oklahoma. <laughs> Ran a lot of that back in the day. Yes, the old wishbone. You know, after, those days. after the, the next two games for Oklahoma, you're not impressed with the schedule, are you? I'm not as impressed. I don't think the Big 12 is as strong this year. I, I really think 
Oklahoma has got a better offense than they had last year. They don't have as good a defense yet. It's very good. I lack some leadership. Uh, and I don't think the schedule in the Big 12 is quite as tough. Texas will see, but Missouri ranked high, got beat early. Nebraska got beat early. Kansas State got swamped early. Uh, I don't think it's as strong, and, uh, and, I, and I like their chances of getting through the year undefeated. Final play, actually, they don't get this one off. So Oregon comes in, improves from the first week, but a, a tough test on the road here in Norman. It's the Sooners with the victory, 31-7, to and they go to 3-0 on the year. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports for Tim Rand, Terry Bowden, Sam Ryan. I'm Terry Gannon. 31-7, the Sooners have won here in Norman. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports championship television. Goodbye, everybody.